Castillo coming to you live from World Championship in San Jose. Welcome to the Living Legends Podcast. And uh, my first case was bad. And I was like, oh no. Oh, oh no. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I am recording, Join by the it. way, so we, we can start yeah. whenever, whenever, whenever you'd like. Well, uh, that's usually our, our cue to start up. So it really uh, is. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Living Legends podcast, your one stop shop for everything flesh and blood related. Uh, and today we have we're, we're continuing on the Outsiders hype train um, because, you know, yesterday, as of recording, yesterday was the official street release date for Outsiders. So a lot of people have been getting their product. Uh, I got a couple cases for myself. And I'm ultimately happy with what I had. Uh, we were kind of chatting about it. I don't know how much Kel is going to leave in, but chatting about the uh, the current online state of uh, pulling cards from outsiders. Uh, there's been some yeah really well, weird variants, <laughs> specifically from the Belgian print too. Yeah. It's only the Belgian oh, no. print, which means yeah, well yeah, for for all of us. Europe. Them. Yeah, which means that uh, specifically it was a Cardamundi Belgian thing. Um, yeah. And we were talking beforehand. I highly suspect it is because someone at Cardamundi put the wrong uncut sheet into the hopper. They probably put the Rainbow Foil Legendary and Fabled sheet into the common foil hopper, which is why you get these boxes that have the same frequency of legendaries mm -hmm. as you would like a common foil. and. You know, if that only happened like one once or twice, that kind of sucks for some people. But overall, in the big picture, it's not that big of a deal. But if it happened for like many, many sheets, and they didn't catch it in time, it could be like, it could be bad. Yeah. It'd be pretty bad yeah. for uh, the legendary market in general. At least the rainbow foil legendary market for uh, for outsiders. I've um, I've already seen them start a tank in price. Like I think like the quiver is like thirty bucks. Flick knives is like fifty bucks. Like. A lot of the Rainbow Foil legendaries are like. I'm glad yeah. that I uh, got myself a Cold Foil one because they seem to be pretty separate from this yeah. issue. Yeah. Um, Luckily, yeah, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, that was uh, a lot of preamble into the the actual start of <laughs> of the podcast. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm the host today. Uh, my name is Bill from the Spike Feeders, and joining me, as always, are my two lovely co-hosts. Uh, let's kick it over alphabetically to Az. Uh, say hello. Hello. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Yeah, we got a um, another list esque video for you today. Just going through our top five favorite cards from Outsiders. Um, some of these might be you might you might guess what some of these are based on our sort of preferences. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> so uh... I I think that's an understatement. I looked at the list and I'm like, it's yeah. you'll see you'll see <laughs> you're 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 in for it. You you could probably guess who who's choosing what. It's pretty funny actually. Exactly. We are yeah. we are nothing if not consistent. <laughs> it's it's like the opposite of Dynasty. Remember Dynasty where Az picked like three warrior cards randomly? That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's not like that. It's not like it's that. It's not this like time. that. No, no, no. <laughs> this no. this set was made for us and uh our picks are reflective of that, I think. Exactly. Yeah, Brian said so. So whatever Brian says is gospel, right? So uh, yeah, yeah. he said this this is the living legend set, essentially. Yeah. Um, um but yeah. So very much I, looking forward to it. Yeah, dude, it's going to be sweet. So, Someone on my Discord, actually, um, after watching the last episode, they made um, a meme of... of a, are, okay, so people out there, I'll, I'll, I'll paint the picture for audio listeners. There yeah. is a Junji Ito short called The Enigma of the Amagiri Fault, I think that's what it's called, okay. where um, there's like this fault line in Japan that has like these outlines of people and people are like drawn to the outline like it feels like it's your own outline and they, they they try to like go inside of the outline and it's like this one was mine it was made for me and someone did a meme of that and superimposed my face onto the guy climbing into the hole and then they put <laughs> outsiders as the hole <laughs> so um yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe in, in post I'll, I'll put the I'll put the image on here. I don't have it available right now. I have all of yeah. the cards um, we talked about already, but uh, that actually uh, really nicely uh, sort of segues into. I introduced as uh, you said, this hole is made for you. Who are you? Hello. Exactly. What is your name? Hello. Who is this hooded man? 
Hello, I'm, I'm just here in the pits. Just leave me alone. I'm gonna drink my grog. Um, I don't know the drink grog. of the pits. I mean, what? What? I don't remember the name of the the drink that Lena Bell gave Azalea in that in the in that story. Oh yeah, summit, wasn't it? Yeah, that's that's what I'm drinking. That's what I'm drinking. Anyway, uh, my name is Kel, also known as Red Zone Rung. How's it going? Um, and I'm really excited to talk about Outsiders. Obviously, um, it's an awesome set, and I I got a lot to talk about. There's some there's some cards here from my list that was just e- immediate slam dunks. I didn't have to think about it. I was just like, yep, these are the cards. How, am I up to five yet? Uh, I have four. Pick one more. Okay, easy, <laughs> easy. Um, <laughs> and yeah. um, it's gonna be a fun one. This is gonna be a fun one. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's uh, basically what I was what I was thinking as well. Um, full disclosure: I didn't officially have my my five picked out, but I knew that it was gonna be pretty easy for this set specifically. And uh, something that I said to both Az and Cal as soon as I hopped on the call was, uh, "This whole set is my top five. This this set is just really sweet." Um, oh yeah, it's there pretty, are like pretty good. Like every set has a card where you look at it and you're like, I just don't really get the point of this or this card feels weak or whatever. And like Outsiders does have a couple of those, but it feels less like it feels like those are the very small minority uh, in an otherwise like just fantastically designed set. And uh, Mm -hmm. it's something that I definitely mentioned to Brian Gottlieb when we had him on the on the channel last week. Um, But yeah, like this. So that's really cool. All the new cards are really sweet, and I think all of the reprints were were well uh, well positioned. Yeah, um, there was a reason for them. They didn't just reprint random cards, but um, yeah. But yeah, so let's boil it down uh, to what we think are the top five cards each. Um, full disclosure as well, we did sort of collaborate to make sure that we didn't have any overlap just so we could talk about as many cards as we possibly could. Yep, yep. Um, all three of us, I think, wanted to put Premeditate on our list because that card yeah. is just awesome. It's um, <laughs> it's also the most expensive Majestic right now, which is yeah. um, mm-hmm. a little bit of a... You'll, you'll have seen it already, but um, I did a little video with Jim from Fab TCG Cards <clears throat> about like the pull rates for the set. The Majestic pull rates. This is way before all the box shenanigans started, the legendary shenanigans. And we were talking about premeditate, and I was like, he was like, yeah, it's like twenty something bucks. I'm like, it's twenty bucks. I'm like, I thought yeah. it would be like ten bucks. I mean, I thought it's a good card, but I didn't think it was like a twenty five dollar card. Like, holy crap, man! Like, yeah, yeah. Well, they're calling it, um, yeah, they're call- they're calling it Ponder Run, aren't they? <laughs> that's yeah. a good name. That is a good name. I do, I do very much like. I think that's accurate, and it's also very clever. So. <laughs> it really is, yeah. And I think that's a good place to start as well. I mean, it was on my, it was on my, uh, when we, I think it's all on all, on all of our lists spiritually. Um, but, um, but yeah, we might as well start with that, haven't we? Shall I start with it? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Me, I was going to kick it over to you anyway because that was going to be my lead in. So pull that bad good. boy up. There you go. And so, um, nice. just a reminder for the audio listeners, when we talk about a card, let's go ahead and like read it all off and all that kind yeah. of. Good yeah, stuff. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Otherwise, I, I would have just went straight in with, "Oh, this this synergizes well yeah. with this and this." And <laughs> <laughs> read the card as, yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is fantastic. First of all, the art on this is absolutely awesome. It's like got Azalea holding this sort of telescope with Lena Bell and some Zangief-looking character in the background there. Um, so yeah, the art is my favorite in the set, 100. Uh, percent Praise be our supreme leader. Um, and um, <laughs> so yeah, this is cult. hashtag Azalea cult. Yep. I, I I heard that in your video the, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the other I day did. as well. It's deck. Yeah. <laughs> toss, toss that Brilliant. in there, yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Um, but yeah, this is a zero-cost generic action, so anybody can use this. So it doesn't have to be Azalea, but obviously it's going to find a home in many decks. Uh, I've heard that Dromai is going to be using it as well, potentially, because it's red line. Hmm. So yeah, pitches for one, cost nothing, blocks for two. And it says the next time an attack action card hits a hero this turn, create a ponder token. So it doesn't have to be an arrow or anything like that. It can be any attack action card. You get a ponder when it hits. Similar to how plunder run works. Obviously, when plunder run works, you draw a card there and then. But this, you draw the card at the end of your turn. So you're not getting that card draw straight away. You're getting it at the end, which most of the time, if you've you know exhausted your hand, will be put into your arsenal. You know, So you're always maintaining mm-hmm. that. Drawing up to four, having an arsenal, always having a five-card hand, essentially, if it works correctly. Um, but not only that, the next attack action card you play from Arsenal this turn gets plus three. Um, so with Rangers, it's essentially just an inherent buff, because you're always yeah. playing cards out of your arsenal anyway. 
But also what I like about it is obviously, and this will go into another card I've picked later, is it obviously it can affect any attack action cards. Even if you play like a CNC out of your arsenal for nine, mm -hmm. you know, you're still getting the ponder plus, you know, plus the buff because it's any attack out of your arsenal. So, yeah, I think it's just yeah. really good. It turns any attacks into... Um, in, in an older Zadia list that I used to play, more of a grindy style defensive thing, I used to have Snatch in there, I used to have Endless Arrow in there because obviously they replaced themselves, pseudo replaced themselves when they hit. This is premeditate turns any attack into something that replaces itself. Um, mm -hmm. So you can maintain that five cards. Um, but yeah, really, really love it. But and it's um, a, I've ramp. This is also a zero pump three that does that as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so absolutely love it. Um, but so yeah, I've rambled long enough about it, but I absolutely love the card. So <laughs> good place to start, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love the card too. I would have put it on my list as well. Uh, I think it's mm. a slam dunk in a lot of decks. And Ranger, I mean, I'll be honest, like I think it's easier. I don't know if this is a hot take or not. I think it's easier to get the plus three from this than Plunder Run. Because Plunder Run, you have to play the Plunder Run from Arsenal to get the plus three. Mm -hmm. This yeah, one, definitely. you just have to you just have to play the attack from Arsenal. And in the classes that I want to play this in, Lexi, Ranger, all that kind of stuff, um, I'm just going to get the plus three no matter what. So this is going to be like an actual just zero plus three and also on hit ponder. And I'm playing this in my like my no fuse Lexi deck. And I'm like, I'm going to yeah. get that ponder and I'm going to get that extra arsenal. It's going to be great. Um, yeah. And I, I definitely want to have like that extra arsenal um, because it, especially with like Lexi, I'm, gonna, I'm running New Horizons. And so even if it's not a card I can immediately play, I can use Lexi's here ability turn it face up on my turn and have that extra arsenal slot to shoot off my arrows. So it's like, mm. no matter what, I, I'm operating like just straight value. Oh, I love this card. Yeah. It's, it's super good. Yeah. If it if it, if it, if, it, if it said, um, if if the card said instead your next attack gains when this hits credit mm. upon the token, it wouldn't be as good. No. Because no. obviously they can just fully block, but it's just any attack that yep. entire turn, yeah. which is just mad. Yeah. this um obviously like like you had mentioned as this is the same sort of uh it's the same wording that we've seen with plunder run which mm. historically has been an issue because yeah. it's so hard with plunder run to prevent your opponent from eventually drawing the card i think that this is probably the the strongest that this type of effect that draws a card should be um, mm -hmm. I think that getting the, the ponder token is probably just as close to drawing a card as they'd want to get without, you know, pushing the boundaries like, like plunder run did, uh, and still does in blitz. But, yeah. um, but yeah, like, I think that premeditate is fantastic. I think that this is an auto include in riptide. This card is oh, just, yeah. gotcha. riptide. like, I, th right. I think that this is you, you add this before you add any other cards in riptide. Like, <laughs> hey. I, I don't see this not being played in like any ranger. This is like ranger yeah. staple, like a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, which is great. It's like basically the the front runner of the set in terms of like the favorite. I think for most people, um, yeah, but so uh, there are, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's uh, <laughs> one that I'm very glad. It's the it's the majestic that I opened the most of uh, in in this set so far. Oh, and, so you have some spares. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, just, uh, not anymore. They are spoken for, but <laughs> I do have <laughs> these two extra ones uh, and two, then two foils as I was well. Say two extra foils you can send me. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks, bud. <laughs> um, but also, speaking of cards that I'm super excited about that are not on my list, uh, mm. Kel, would you like to talk oh. about? One of your cards. I'm specifically looking at the top one, but you can do them any order. In order, any order. I, I don't. I don't have the <laughs> list. Is the top one Plague Hive or uh, Spreading Plague? The top one is Spreading Plague. Okay, let, let's just go Spreading Plague. I love this card. This card is awesome. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. So, pl Spreading Plague is definitely one of my favorite cards. It was like I loved it the second I saw it because it does like everything I want to do in Assassin. So Spreading Plague is an Assassin attack reaction. It is a yellow pitch card. It costs one to play, blocks three. So it has that nice Assassin thing where you can, you can still block well with it. And it says, yeah. create X Blood Rot Pox tokens under the defending hero's control where X is the number of defending cards this chain link. And I think some of the keywords here are number of defending cards. They don't have to yeah. be cards from hand. It also includes equipment. So if your opponent's like, oh, I'm going to throw in the fridge here. Here's two from hand and, you know, two equipment. This would make four Blood Rot Box tokens. And what's extra good about this? It's so good. 
is that the way flesh and blood works is you draw your hand at the end of your turn. So this means that if your opponent blocked with a bunch of cards, they don't have those cards to then pitch to pay for the blood rat pox. So this card is going to absolutely just eat their life. Um, oh, yeah. Or on the other hand, they could just not block at all and take all the damage that I'm attacking them with, which in, is great for me because I'm playing Uzuri, and if, if my... If my um, shakedown hits you or my surgical extraction hits you, I'm still ripping stuff out of your hand no matter what. So this mm. is like damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situation here where you're either going to block and eat a whole bunch of blood rot pox or you're going to take the damage and then suffer like my nasty on hit effect. This is mm. like, I love this card so much. And then if they, if they just take the damage, then you just arsenal this and then play it next turn. Like, or they could just keep yeah. taking damage and keep getting cards ripped out of their hands. Either way, this is this is just... Oh, I love this card so much. That's got to say, it's so like, um, is it, um, is it like one of those cards that you can just literally just store in your arsenal until you, in, until they have a massive turn where they're like, oh yeah, I need to block all of this stuff because they're going off of their, obviously your four card hand, for instance, and then suddenly you're like, bang, spreading plague, f yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, it it's so sweet. The fact that it costs one is definitely a downside, but. Um, in oh, Assassin, yeah. you're either going to be running Tunic or maybe even the Redback Shroud. I'm not 100% sure on the Redback Shroud yet, but either way, Tunic or Redback Shroud both pay for this. So, like... Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's... Yeah. It's basically free on the turn that you want it to be free. And for Uzuri, mm -hmm. like, um, you don't really pay resources for a lot of stuff, like, no. at all. So, um, no, this is just good. This is just, like... Oh, I love this card. And, and like, yeah. I'm thinking about it in terms of, like, CC. For Blitz, it's even nastier, right? You give them four Blood oh, Rat yeah. Pox, it's eight damage. It's almost half their life. Um, it's crazy. Yep. I love it. That's yeah, a good one. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, I'm going to attack in with an Isolate, and I have something in my hand um, that I'm going to swap it in for, like a Shakedown or something. And they're like, well, I'm going to block with one from hand, and I want to make sure that I don't get hit by this Shakedown, so I'm going to throw three of my equipment in oh, front of it. Oh, yes. A real... That's a real situation that can happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, and then, yeah, you either blow them out with the shakedown if they don't respect it, or you spreading plague them. Yeah. And <laughs> it's just nuts. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, it's, it's... I was... I was singing the praises of spreading plague as soon as I saw it, because, you know, we've been saying since the very beginning of spoiler season, blood rot pox tokens are crazy. And yeah. this is the way to make the most amount in, in, from one card. Um, yeah. And so yeah, this was one I I was going to put on my list, and then saw, saw Kel already had it, so I was like, yeah, you can you can take that one. But I'm still a unanimous that. win all yeah, round. It, it was like sl absolute slam dunk. One of my favorite cards of the set. I'm probably gonna be one of my most played cards of the set too. And one my one last thing about Spreading Plague, it does something that's not super common in Flesh and Blood, and that it punishes your opponent for blocking. And I mm -hmm. love. I love that kind of design space where a lot of decks could just block, 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 you know, do, you can do the Oldham thing, tank up, block, 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 all, all that you want, fatigue your opponent out. This really punishes them for doing that. And I, mm -hmm. I love that kind of design space and I want to see more of that. Um, yeah, huge, huge win. Yeah, I like nice. it. just a great card. Um, and then going to my first pick, uh, this isn't like in order for my favorite number one card, of course, or like it, it's not in any particular. In general, order. Yeah. 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 Just pick five of my favorite cards from the set. Yeah. Um, first one I want to talk about today is Amplifying Arrow. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. This card's just really cool. Um, yeah. It is uh, obviously an arrow. Uh, Ranger attack action. It's the majestic uh, number exactly 100, which I think is also oh, just yeah. very um it's a uh, yellow so it pitches for two it costs zero uh, it attacks for two and blocks for three and then it also reads while amplifying arrow is face up in any zone if it would gain power it instead gains that much plus one um so you know if you're attacking with this for two and then you raise a reflex it or um or play a, uh, a rain razors or something like that anything any reason that this would ever gain power it gains an additional one on top of that so it just becomes a really efficient way to stack buffs onto things um i know kel is really uh happy about this card as well because in no fuse lexi you put it in with uh voltaire and give it plus one this is a zero for four yeah. um in the worst possible case yeah uh, it's a yellow mm -hmm. yellow zero for four that also gets a plus three from rain razors so if you just have rain razors yeah. on top of it 
That's a, that's what seven. So just seven. just amplifying arrow rain razors is a zero for seven. It's pretty good. Yeah, mm. and like that's again like a super generic baseline situation for it. It still gets the plus two total from something like um, uh, like bullseye bracers. Yep. Um, it just is a very efficient card that is also a like it also pitches for two. Uh, so it's still a good resource card. Um, obviously not like fantastic. It would have been better if it was blue, but I think that that might even even pushed it <laughs> into being a little bit too much of an auto include. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, what I like what I like about this as well is uh, is the space that it's in. It says when it's face up in any zone, right? Mm -hmm. So the fact that there's like this earthbound sort of leafy ranger in the art as well gives us the, the impression that is there going to be design space that interacts with stuff in any zone face up. Mm -hmm. um, so because that, so, that could that could work with graveyard because your stuff's face up in there in graveyard face up in banished zone etc um <laughs> so uh so yeah yeah just thought i'd mention just that weird stuff mm. um but yeah i'm really happy that it is this way because um you know there are buffs that say um like stuff from the last set even where it's like target face up arrow in your arsenal gets plus three or whatever yeah. um so this still gets the increased buff from that and it also gets the increase while it's on the while it's attacking and on the combat chain um so i just really like this i think people clocked it immediately that this is a card that i would like i think i got tagged on twitter even <laughs> when this nice. card got revealed <laughs> And yeah, absolutely right. I think this card's super cool. Um, I think it works really well in Lexi. And Rangers love buffs anyway. And this just makes your buffs, even if it's just pushing it over a breakpoint, like that's important enough. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I really, really like this one. Uh, this is definitely going into um, most of my Ranger decks. Um, mm -hmm. because I just I also just really like the art. The art is really cool. It's a it's an like as said, sort of a leafy, like earth talented elemental ranger that looks, looks like she's shooting uh, like a like a flower that's cool I like that yeah too. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean absolutely this one this one made it into my no fuse lexi deck both this and premeditate were like windmill slams like yeah like, it's like just, just an easy include it's it's a yellow man like you can use it to load your bow and then fire an arrow like that's pretty good yeah, yeah. just uh Definitely. just a, a good card on all fronts yeah um but yeah, that spins, back, spins, spins back around to me again. I'm thinking I'm just yeah. going to sort of uh, reorder these. And as, as I said, our, our cards are in no particular order, so I'm just going to go with the flow as what might be appropriate. And I think this is based on what we were just talking about, and that is a buff card, which mm. is called uh, Scout the Periphery. Yeah, um, so this is one of my favourites in in here. Obviously, it comes in all pitch values. Obviously, it costs nothing to play. Blocks for two. Um, so it comes in red, yellow, or blue. Um, and it says, look at the top card of target hero's deck, first of all, when you play it. It's a generic action. And it says, the next attack action card you play from Arsenal this turn, again, gets plus three, two, or one, depending on the pitch value, and it has go again. So, again, like Premeditate, it buffs the next thing you play from Arsenal, which obviously is great for Rangers, but it doesn't just care about arrows. You can still, with the blue one, uh, I thought I think it's quite good. Obviously, it pitches well. Obviously, you get a plus one from the arsenal. If you, if you, even if you like play a command and conquer after the after a blue scout the periphery, you're pushing a seven C and C through, which is a nice break point. Plus, you get to look at the top card of your deck. That's worst case scenario, but I just thought that was a nice little interaction that it, it you know, it works with any action cards. But in Azalea, which is where this is probably going to find its home, especially the red one, obviously, it's just another way you can look at the top of your deck, which is what you want to be doing with Azalea. Uh, I think um, the, the way a lot of people are going to be playing her now is similar to Starvo, really, just chucking a huge, dominated, massive, dominated arrow uh, at someone. Uh, if they can, and obviously this is just helping towards that goal because you can just look at the top card of your deck after you've done the cross wrap, after you've done the read the glide path, and all this other opt that you're getting. Um, it just allows you to go an extra one deep if you need to potentially. So, yeah, really, really like it. Yeah, I mean, I uh, Bill mentioned Riptide before as well. I think this is like sick with Riptide. Because exactly. you immediately slap that card in your arsenal. So like this plus like Death Touch with mm. uh, Riptide is just like a, a one for nine. Like this is pretty good. Like Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I yeah. keep forgetting about Riptide as well as the fact that obviously these cut that these cards that say the next attack action card you play from Arsenal, you know, can be the 
deft touches and can be the other things as well. And you get to reload, reload essentially a card from Riptide's ability straight in there after you play this. So yeah, yeah very, very mm-hmm. good point as well. Yeah. yeah, it's literally just a zero plus three for Riptide. Like zero plus yeah. three in your next attack because you're just going to put your next attack in your arsenal no matter what. Really exactly. Good. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Uh, it, it fits in really nicely with the existing uh, package that Azalea has of just zero for threes. Um, and pseudo opt. That make you think super tall. And yeah, pseudo opt. Like this mm. is obviously in, in that sort of situation, like in Azalea specifically, it's worse than read the glide path. Um, oh, because yeah. that's actual opt and also uh, arrow, which, you know, doesn't really... Um, most of the things that you're attacking with in Azalea are is an arrow anyway, unless it's like Ravenous Rabble or Enlightened mm. Strike. But uh, yeah, specifically in Riptide, I think that this is better than Read the Glide Path because you're not always going to be attacking with an arrow. Um, no, I feel yeah, like Virulent yeah. Touch is like an obscene card in Riptide, and that doesn't get the buff from Read the Glide Path. So uh, just in situations like that, I think that this is like uh, it, it's a worthy inclusion in Ranger decks in terms of buffs. I, I think it's like just extremely solid yeah it's just more versatile isn't it i mean yeah. i don't know i don't know i don't know about i don't, don't really know about lexi but obviously the other rangers the pits based rangers yeah um <laughs> definitely love this i think yeah for, um, i don't think this is good lexi um, no you, yeah. you want to be doing more proactive stuff like uh exactly. well yeah, this is also proactive but you want to be doing more like um i don't want to say busted stuff like premeditate you want to draw that card you know you, that's what you want <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. Obviously, the, 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 the synergy in this is with Riptide because you reload off of it, or in Azalea because you look at the top card of it, you know? They're, they're, yep. the, they're, they're the synergies in the hero, the rangers that will run it. Alexi, as you say, is trying to do something completely different, but... Yep. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely love it. So, yeah, that's that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kel, what's your next one? Let's see. I am just going to jump to... Let's go to Plague Hive. So... This is a card that I made a whole like 15 minute video talking about, um, partially because we predicted that it was going to be an assassin class card, but we did not predict that it was also a ranger class card. So Plague Hive, if you don't know, is the fabled card from Outsiders. It is an assassin ranger resource gem. Uh, it has the legendary keyword, which means you can only have one of them in your deck, which is very true for every single gem uh, in existence currently. And it says, when you pitch Plague Hive, for each opposing hero, choose Inertia, Frailty, or Blood Rot Pox at random and create that token under their control. So your opponent gets one of the three plagues from the pits at random. Um, mm-hmm. I love this card on so many levels. First of all, the art is done by Mark Poole, legendary fantasy artist, and the art just looks incredible. It looks so good. It just looks, I don't know how to put it, classic iconic it just it just has this look to it that i i think just really resonates with mark Poole's style um yeah and um i mean it's literally a fable that has my two favorite classes on it assassin ranger like once again like this card was like made for me and it has this weird janky random effect which also i very much like so it's like this card is like if i were to design a fable it would probably end up being pretty damn close to play Hive. to be honest it's not busted um, it's, it's one of those cards that some people think like, oh, this is way too busted. And then other people are like, this is a crack bobble. Like, like some people yeah. think it's unplayable. Some people think it's broken. And to me, that probably means it's somewhere in between. I, I think this card is a card which can win you a game out of nowhere. And also at the same time, do stone nothing in other circumstances. Um, yeah. I, a little anecdote. I did, I did pull one of these at the pre-release um, and I won my final game with Plague Hive pitching it. So okay, let me. I'll, I'll, I won't spend too much too much time on this, but I was playing against my last round opponent. His name is Kevin. Shout out to Kevin if you're listening to this. And uh, he was at one life, and I was at like three or something like that. And he's attacking me. I block with the card, and then he does a reaction. Um, in response to the reaction, or just you know somewhere around this effect, I use my instant effect or one of my seeker pieces um, to prevent one damage and opt pitching plague hive. And so he has no cards in hand and he's attacking me for one and so i pitch plague hive and we have a one in three chance to roll a blood rot pox and if if we roll the blood rot pox he dies at the end of his turn um, yeah. i'll take some damage i'll go down to one i think um and so we roll the dice uh and it ended up being a blood rot pox and it just killed him like this card nice. literally just killed him um where i'm not sure if i would have won that game i think it would have been pretty close um 
because I was set. I, I I was a little bit reserved in my turn. I was gonna set up like an Uzuri turn. I had I kept a two card hand. Um, mm-hmm. but um, if I had rolled like a frailty or a um inertia, I just would have just done nothing. And that that's kind of what it ha- happens. Like sometimes you'll roll an inertia against Icelander and it'll be amazing, or you'll roll frailty against Icelander and it will do absolutely nothing. So like, that's right. yeah, I I love this card so much. So yeah. that, my little spiel on Plague Hive, it's cool, um, and I love that. They not have any. They don't have any cards to pitch into the lot into the blood rot that you made them. Then that zero. They they were all on. Uh, they were all on board. Yeah, they were. They attacked me with a card. I blocked with a card, and then they pitched to do a reaction. I think it was maybe like a short and sharp or something like that. They did. They did mm. a, a reaction. So they had no cards oh. in hand. So they just just died on the spot. Yeah. Wah. Unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> or I, uh... I was lucky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I definitely saw somebody say that they were unimpressed that it was at random. Uh, and then somebody immediately after said, if it wasn't random, this is crazy. Oh, um, yes, it's a yes. yeah. pitch that pretty much always does two damage. Like, what? what? No, it, <laughs> it, would be, it would way be too strong. disgusting. Not just the blood rot pox, but imagine like every time you pitch this frailty against your Benji opponent or your yeah. uh, Katsu or whatever, or like always get the inertia against ranger or um or icelander or whatever like the the fact that it's random makes it like not disgusting um yeah and i, and I do want to say one more thing be- oh, needs to be random <laughs> yeah and then one more thing before we're done talking about this it is yeah. each opposing hero so yeah. ultimate pit fight plagues for oh, everyone yeah. everyone gets a plague um true yeah. i love I, yeah this card is just a, i love this so much yeah. yeah, multiplayer art aspect, random mm-hmm. jank, cool art. Oh, yeah. Really Tips excited to get my hand on one eventually. <laughs> it's so cool. I, yeah. I have a rainbow foil, but I I have a mighty need for a cold foil one. Um, and I'm I'm not going to Baltimore for the pro tour, but I already messaged uh, Jim. I've already mentioned him once once this episode, and he's going. And I'm like, Jim, if I mail you my plague hide, can you get Mark Pool to sign it for me? <laughs> he's like, Yeah. So nice. I want I want to get it signed. So. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Um, okay. So next up is my my next pick. Uh, let's do. I'm gonna do uh, three of my cards are ninja cards because basically, of course, you are. know, spoilers. As picked a bunch of ranger cards. Uh, Kel picked a bunch of assassin cards. I picked ninja cards because I think ninja cards are cool. But I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on those because there's one other card that isn't a ninja card on my list, and that's give and take. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, uh, Give and Take is a generic Majestic. Uh, it pitches for one, costs one, uh, attacks for three, and blocks for three. Generic attack action. Uh, whenever Give and Take is defended by an action card, you may put an action card with cost less than Give and Take's power from your graveyard on top of your deck. And then this has go again. Uh, it was... It was pretty early on confirmed by judges that for every action card that your opponent blocks with, you get to put a card yeah. from your graveyard. Yeah. Top of the deck. Yeah. Wow. So if your opponent just is like, okay, whatever, I'm going to block with two cards from my hand, like an attack and a non attack, it's like, okay, cool. I get to pick two action cards with cost less than three, so two, one, or zero, and put them back on top of my deck. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> That's yeah. so good. Um, a lot of people are saying, especially like Mount Heroic Briar, if they're going off, they have a channel Mount Heroic and an active force of nature. This is an attack for six that puts a card back on top of your deck that you then get to draw if it hits. Oh, this... Which, because this is an attack for six with go again, it is likely going to hit unless your opponent wants to give you two cards. Like. Oh. So what PTSD <laughs> from Briar. This yeah. this card is like so good into like a fatigue kind of thing. So it's like either they take damage and you win on life, or they block and you start winning on cards. Like you get some cards yeah. back. And they're like yeah. the specific cards that you want. This card, once again, this is kind of why I like Plague Hive. This card punishes your opponent for blocking. And I love it. Mm. I absolutely love it. Um yeah, it's very anti fatigue, yeah. isn't it? Very anti fatigue. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, and also the art has that Zangief guy getting mugged by three squeakers. So there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. so, 
again, just a, a card that feels almost like I don't even want to say that it feels unassuming because this effect is just crazy, especially since they've confirmed that it's one for each action card. Yeah. Uh, like obviously doesn't trigger off of equipment, doesn't trigger off of reactions or anything, but 90% of the time your opponent is going to be defending with action cards from their hand. So yeah. it's oh. like it just it allows you to basically either sculpt your next hand or if your briar gets to you get to draw into your next attack, which is probably just a snatch okay. or something. Like mm. I, I just thought of something. Hear me out. This is me thinking about it from the decks that I play. No fuse Lexi. Mm. Give and take. They block. You put maybe you pump it with something. You put two arrows on top of your deck, three of a kind. Draw those arrows. Like, this has go again. This thing just ha it has go again. It just has go again. And yeah. also it blocks for three, too, but it has go again on it. So you can actually, like, give and take, go. and then if you have some way to draw cards, you can draw those cards that you just put back on top. Yeah. Um, like, I would probably hmm. even just add this to Benji uh, just as a way to put Spring Tidings back into your hand if you yeah. failed the first time or yeah. you know, whatever. Um, like, it's just a really good low-to-the-ground redundancy card. Um, I. Yeah, I'm just surprised at how much I like this. And the more I read it, the more I like it. Yeah. Um, it's just a just a really cool one. It's an it's unfortunate that uh, I've I haven't pulled this or Amnesia yet. Just mm. zero copies of either. So, um, but yeah, really really excited about give and take. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I basically basically gets any attack back unless you're playing Guardian, right? Essentially, yeah. everything it's any action. Oh God! It's also okay. non -ac non attack. <laughs> yeah, action. Yeah, yeah. Oh no! Oh, you can <laughs> like it's crazy. <laughs> you can get your three of a kind back with your three of a kind. Oh, let's go, Pog! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> yeah, we go. It's just a it's a weird card that is really good in its weirdness. Um, and I'm happy that they they yeah. they made it. <laughs> I'm I'm just thinking of just like the absolute craziest play lines. Okay, so for like Riptide, you could get get your three of a kind back. Play one three of a kind and then arsenal your other three of a kind from Riptide's hero ability and then play that one from your arsenal. So you can draw <laughs> six cards. I don't know like how you're, you're gonna arsenal. Oh you Beautiful. could no, you can keep doing it. Because Riptide lets you arsenal every time you play a card from hand. Oh, but you can't play a card from hand with you can't a three play a of a card kind. From hand after that. Oh, it's quite the conundrum. We can get around it. I don't know. Workshop that. <laughs> we'll workshop that's that. more of an issue with uh, three of a kind and not with give and take. Give and take yeah. sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, this is this is this is a cool card. This is I, I really love this card. I, I I love the design. Whoever designed this card, Brian Gottlieb, uh, James White, whoever designed this card, um, it's an absolutely killer design. Because yeah. like the more I think about it, the more I like it. Because like the more you pump this card, the more it, it incentivizes people to block it. And then the more they block it, the more cards you get. Like That's so, true. like giving yeah. this just like a, a good old plus three with like a nimbleism or something is just like really nice. It's like you want to take six, or you want to give but it. Then a it card works. Card. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But then it also works the other way because they'll be like, oh, I'm not going to block this. And then suddenly you could raise a reflex it as well and deal mm -hmm. seven damage or whatever, six damage. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and yeah, it, it still works. has go again. <laughs> yeah, it's go it again. still has go again. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, uh, just everything about this card is just sweet. I, uh, yeah. The more you think about it, you could do a podcast on just this card for the rest, exactly. of, your, the rest of your life, like, essentially. So I honestly think like the two the two most played cards from this set are two of the ones that we already talked about. It's premeditate and give and take. And currently premeditate is the more expensive card. I would mm. not be surprised in like three months from now that give and take is the most expensive card in the set. Like I think people are kind of sleeping on it right now, and I think it's like yeah. very, very good. Like it's good in every single way. It has go again, it blocks three, it has like a really, really good ability, punishes your opponent for blocking. Like really good in aggro decks, could be really good in like mid range decks. This card's like it's just really good. Yeah. yeah. Just just solid. Um anyway, we could I, I could certainly go on about give and take for a while, but uh as no, you one. are up next, yeah. if you would like to head into your third pick. Yeah, definitely. Um so so my third pick is like a, a collection of cards. Mm. Uh, and um, yeah, so these are the lace with either blood rot, frailty, or inertia. So lace with diseases, essentially. Uh, and this is a uh, a rare cycle of ranger action. So they only come in one pitch value. So that's red. Uh, they cost nothing to play, and they do block for two. So standard rain ranger defense there. Um, but these are cool. So it just says your next arrow attack this turn gains plus three across the board for all of these. 
and then it gains, when this hits a hero, create a blood rot, frailty, or inertia token under their control, and it has go again. So it's just a standard sort of buff card for an arrow, but obviously it gives you either a uh, a disease, depending on what, what the matchup is that you want. So if you want to go into like a more of a damage-based mm-hmm. thing, you could, you could side in your lace with blood rots. If you're facing stuff that care about Arsenal, like other rangers or like Icelander or whatever, you could side in the inertias. And uh, similar to frailties, if you're facing ninjas or other sort of like little swipey uh, thousand cut style decks or whatever. Um, so yeah, I really, really like these. Just a, a buff that you know you can buff all your arrows with and have a sort of sideboard esque type feel to them, depending on the matchup as well. So yeah, I think I think these could be um, quite good. As fact, the fact they cost nothing to play as well is just uh, just brilliant. So I mean, yeah, do... yeah, man, blood rot threatens five damage for zero. It's pretty good. Exactly. Yeah. I was about to say yeah. like that, that that is a zero for five that's a zero for five <laughs> yeah <laughs> every good. single time that you play this it's a zero for five um, no, blood rot exactly. is awesome <laughs> oh, i want to see yeah. someone do the meme of uh the guy with the butterflies and it's like is this an enlightened strike and it's like laced with blood rot <laughs> lace of blood rot yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this an e-strike zero for yeah. five yeah yeah zero for five. The, five. the joke um, by the way is that Easter egg doesn't actually cost zero. That's the joke. Don't you don't have to comment Just, it in the thing. Yeah. We know. We know. <laughs> we already got it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, um, I think I think um, I think these are all good. But I think my I think my favorite one personally is inertia because because mm-hmm. I like um, I like seek and destroy a lot. And obviously, mm-hmm. in- inertia is a similar effect where they obviously put all the cards in their hand on the bottom of their deck at the end, so they can't arsenal anything. Um, so yeah, I really really do like inertia. I think inertia is um, my favorite plague. Just because I love the seek and destroy so much, yeah. um, but um, but yeah, I've I just thought they were cool, so that definitely made my list. That all three of them. Yeah, yes. no, I, I definitely think when um, my when I was going through the the thing with Tommy Fresh, which is now live, and you can you can listen to our five hour discussion about it's this. Already hours. have done. It's five <laughs> hours, man. I saw it pop up five my hours, timeline, yeah. and I was like. <laughs> I thought my two-hour limited review was like way too long, and yours pops up and it's like five hours, and I'm like, "Holy hell, man!" Like, Absolute it's just, it's Zach just Schneider cut. Do. That's like a, it's every time, and it's awesome. It's like, like I'm, a short yeah. work day, man. Yeah. Um, thankfully, Brilliant. this time was over two days, uh, and if you watch the YouTube version, you'll be able to see that at some point the the windows behind me get darker and darker and darker, and then all of a sudden it's like, boom, it's daytime. Bang. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But in Brilliant. our in our review, before we even hit the end of it, uh, when we were talking about the uh, the plagues in general, um, both of us out the gate were like, "Blood rot's crazy. Blood rot's just the best one." Um, and then as we talked about it, we're like, "Wait a second, the other two are also really good. Like, n- oh, yeah. none of these are are really bad. I think frailty is just the most the most um, like limited in scope." Um, haha okay i just want to say you said most limited in scope I unintended actually, i actually think it's the best one for limited like it really yeah. is like yeah. i i was very very impressed playing with it in limited it is so good against all of the classes specifically ninja and assassin and assassin tends to be the most common one at least in COD. absolutely and yeah. it just like gives you almost a free turn it's like ah your daggers attack for nothing now yeah, what, what in, li- in, lim- in limited, you do find yourself choosing frailty if you've got an on hit for some reason. Yeah, you know, because you're because you're facing down Kadachis or whatever or spiders bites. Yeah, they then they just then don't do anything. All so, of yeah. all of Riptide's attacks also have like minus one because he's just exactly. attacking from Arsenal. It's it's yeah. so good. It's so good. Yeah. Anyway, like against a against a ninja or something, this could just be like kind of gain three life, um, which is. Yeah not irrelevant um it's nice. just a whole sigil on top of a thing that adds three damage like that's sweet that's a good swing well that's um, where all your, that's where all your life gets lost against ninjas is the bloody kadachis for one you're just like nah don't no blocks and then suddenly you've yeah. taken 10 damage over the course of the bloody game already so yeah, yeah. that makes sense so as well i uh i definitely feel you when you say that inertia is like your favorite one because i especially in the games that we've played already where you have you know lace with inertia or inertia or um Seek and, shot. See, and seek and destroy um mm-hmm. like those types of effects that create the seek and destroy effect um it really does put a specific type of pressure on the game where you're not able to um sit on something to to try to win no. for your spot you you like have to use all of your cards effectively that turn or you just straight up lose them and that's like mm-hmm. a pretty important clock 
uh, and can lead to your opponent just having to make awkward plays uh, that aren't super efficient. So yeah, it's that whole it's that whole my, my sort of personality is like living in the moment, right? So we're, that, mm-hmm. that, that, that that's the thing you're doing with inertia is you're living in the moment. You can't store anything. You have to play each turn as as you're drawing it, as you're sort of going through the motions, living living life on the edge. You don't know what's coming next, but you can't store anything. So that's yeah, it definitely goes into my personality as well. I think, which is why I like it. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. I'm I'm just a simple man. I want damage, damage, just damage, kill, damage, kill, 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 kill. Yeah, Pox punch him. in the face well, constantly. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, you do have a couple of things on here that uh, help out in that respect, Kel. So did you want to go on to your third pick as well? Mm. Well, that's me. I have a nice segue from here. We're gonna go from uh, lace with blood rot to codex of blood rot. Um, oh, okay. Oh man. Okay. So codex of blood rot is one of the three codices. Of the set, it is a zero-cost yellow pitch card that blocks for two. It is another Assassin Ranger card. Spoilers. I picked a lot of Assassin cards, but by virtue of them, I've also picked a lot of Ranger cards because more than half my picks are both Ranger and Assassin cards. Um, Fitting. Which makes a lot of sense, yes. <laughs> um, I think I think Blood, Codex of Blood Rot is my favorite one, which um, is probably not a common thing. I think a lot of people like Frailty, but mm. I really love Codex of Blood Rot. So it says... Each hero puts a card from their hand face down into their arsenal. Create a ponder token under your control and a blood rot pox token under each opponent's control. Go again. So what I love about this, and this is true for all of the the codices, but uh, what I love about this is that it rips a card out of your opponent's hand. It's almost like a uh, intimidate because it says each hero puts a card from their hand face down into their arsenal. This is not a may. It's not each player may do it. You have to do it. If you have an open spot in your arsenal, you have to put a card face down. So if you are playing this in an aggressive deck, like No Fuse Lexi, for example, uh, it yeah. literally rips a card out of your opponent's hand. One less card that they can block with. Um, not only that, is that you will arsenal a card that you're already going to be playing anyway. So, like, for you, it doesn't matter, right? And um, so, for example, I also really like this in Uzuri. Uh, I just put a stealth card into my arsenal that I'm just going to play anyway. And then I'm just going to attack you with a stealth card and then sneak it in or sneak in whatever else is in my hand. Yeah. On top of that, I also give you a, a, a Blood Rot Pox and I also give you a Ponder. And I love the way this synergizes with Blood Rot Pox as well. One less card in your hand means one less card that you can pitch to Blood Rot Pox. So you're going to be more likely to take the damage. Um, this mm-hmm. thing, the same is true actually for the frailty, the the codex of frailty. They they synergize really really well. Like the effects synergize mm-hmm. really really well with them. Um, yeah. And this card is just like gross as hell. Like the art is just so super gross. I've been picking a lot of gross ones because I also picked the 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 spreading plague too, which is also really spreading gross. Plague. Yeah. Um, shout out to the artists here. Like this one is uh, Mateus, uh, and he just made this really just. It's got like a syringe and these bloody snip little snippers. Um, yeah. Well, and a book made of human flesh. I think you're. Oh, I mean, yeah. there's an you're ear. Burying the lead a bit here. There, there's an ear and uh, like a nose on it. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like a, like a Necronomicon, but like a freshly made ne- Necronomicon. It's like yeah, yeah. It's, it's not like you know four thousand years old. It was like made like on Tuesday. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's still fresh. You know. Yeah. Um. So I like this one. It's my favorite codex. But I'll be honest. I run both blood rot and frailty in my. Uh, Lexi and Uzuri deck. I like them both very, very much. Um, yeah. I think the codexes are codices are some of my favorite and best cards in the set. I would rank them up pretty highly. And yeah. I will say, for multiplayer, once again, this t- tying into the multiplayer thing, this is yet Beach. another card that affects all players, um, which is really good. Everyone can have a blood rot. Everyone gets a blood rot. Um, I just want to plague everyone. Hey, how generous! I just want to plague everyone. <laughs> That's my. Yeah. Nice. I uh, I just uh, all of the all of the codices are fantastic designs. I think inertia is probably the least exciting of them, but I I don't necessarily think that it's bad, um, because it is kind of drawing a card for you. Um, it's, well, you, put you, you have to discard. Your your... You have to discard a card though. Yeah, but if it's a card that you already didn't want, or if this is the last card in your hand, much like with frailty. Um, then you don't have to, and you instead just get the top card of your deck into your arsenal. What I mm. what I like about the inertia one is it's the only one where you can totally dumpster your opponent if they have an unplayable on top of their deck, like a gem. You could inertia gem them into the arsenal, and they literally have no way to get rid of it unless they have some sort of arsenal interaction, like a riptide uh, quiver yeah. kind of thing, you know? 
So like I didn't even think about that. There's the there's the very small chance you can inertia a gem on top into the arsenal. (laughs) Oh or like uh, I just thought of something absolutely evil. And in UPF, you can shitty Christmas present a bobble on top of their deck and then inertia the bobble into their arsenal. (laughs) You can totally do that. Oh wow, that's quality. Oh man. Ooh, next that's UPF. So funny. Next UPF, I'm going to be doing that. Oh, that's so nice. You're just going to be bad Santa. Yeah, yeah it's just going to be it's, it's it's kill me first the UPF. <laughs> the UPF. <laughs> oh, oh god. That's so good. Um anyway, uh I, there, I do have another very clever uh segue into my next pick oh, yeah. because doing that would be it, some people might describe as very dishonorable of you. <laughs> um, I don't want to talk about his dishonor. Do I look like oh, a guy please. who is honorable? <laughs> you, oh, you I you're still the... wearing his hood up as well. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, yeah, the guy on dishonor both has long hair and I believe a hood, uh, or maybe just long hair, but I don't know. He, he um, is, he is... Card. Oh, I, I wish I was that buff and, and also yeah, full honestly, of swords. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um anyway so now we're getting into the uh the glut of cards for my top five that are all ninja cards because i think that ninja got some really really spicy stuff Mm um honestly i i should have picked a couple of other cards as well but i had to maintain a top five so i just wanted to pick the 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 best of the best the cream of the crop and uh, for me dishonor is is one of those um for those of you who don't know uh majestic ninja attack action uh, pitches for three, costs zero, so perfect for Kadachis. Also blocks for three, exactly yeah. where you want a ninja card to be, just in general. Uh, attacks for two, uh, it has combo. If Bonds of Ancestry was the last attack this combat chain, this has plus two, so it becomes a four, which is a perfect, um, like, the next breakpoint, essentially. Uh, mm. Very relevant. Uh, it also has some other text here. <laughs> um, when this hits a hero, if you control Surging Strike, Descendant Gust Wave, and Bonds of Ancestry, that hero loses all abilities for the rest of the game. Pretty good. <laughs> uh, so, like, super mega sleep dart. Uh, <laughs> the yeah. sleepiest dart. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think that this part is sweet. Um yeah. From what we've seen so far, you know, Descendant Gust Wave uh, and Bonds of Ancestry, both cards that I, I honestly would have put on my list if there was more room, um, both really, really excellent new additions to Ninja, specifically Bonds of Ancestry. I think that card is crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but all of these cards that it references are cards that you would just probably be playing in a Ninja deck anyway. So with the uh, ability of katsu with the ability of bonds of ancestry you can kind of just have this as like a looming threat that sort of paints the entire game sort of like how mask of momentum does um Mm -hmm. not as consistently as mask of momentum but it is still sort of the thing where you know if you just so happen to have the ability Mm -hmm. to go up to dishonor your opponent then starts to sweat because it's Mm -hmm. like well you know i'm playing levia I can't afford to not be able to turn off blood debt or I will just lose the game next I turn. I will just die. Yeah. <laughs> getting so, dunked. Love you getting dunked. Proper dunking on them. Yeah. yeah. So um, obviously like it's, it's not a, a super frequent use case that the, the on hit will even be a thing. Um, at least as far as I've seen so far, I could be proven wrong and please, I hope that I am wrong because <laughs> this is, I think at this point, um if this is active this is this one of the strongest on hits in the game um it's like this and red and the ledger in my opinion um yeah this uh turning off your opponent's like access to the the ability that i assume most heroes will have built their entire deck around because it's a consistent effect that plays through the game obviously this does nothing against dash but even in those cases it's a blue zero that blocks for three it is still just a good ninja card. <laughs> I mean, yeah. even if you play this against Dash, you have also played a Surging Strike, the Senate Gust Wave, and Bonds of Ancestry, which is yeah. like at red, that's a 5-5, five, five, a 4, and this is another four. 4. So, you know, it's just a little bit of damage. Eighteen damage? <laughs> a little bit. Wait, no. Surging Strike, Descendant. Yeah, yeah, 5-5, five, five, 4, and 4. Yeah, yeah not, not 5 bad. five four, And then you've probably attacked with Kadachis as well on your turn. Yeah. So this is like 20 damage if this is going off, so... That's still pretty good. And and mass um, momentum trigger at some point and yeah. Yeah. So like 
yeah, I think that this card is sweet. Uh, I think that it's something that just probably by default gets added into ninja decks because again, it's a zero for three that, or it's a, sorry, it's a blue zero that blocks for three. Those are the most important parts of a card that gets put into a ninja deck, either just as a resource thing or a flex spot. And this is a flex spot that has, like I've said, maybe the strongest on hit that exists in flesh and blood. So yeah, this, um, is, this is why I'm thinking like blocking is becoming harder, right? Especially if you're Katsu, because not only have you got the mask, but now you're now, but now if, if you're being presented both a surging strike and a descendant gust wave as as the opponent, you're thinking, oh no, here it comes. Mm -hmm. I have to set. I have to save my blocks for the dishonor now. So that you're then potentially taking the next attack, which is the bonds of ancestry to the face, because you need to have cards to block the dishonor. If your hero cares about the on hit effect, yeah. that is. Yeah. But it's just creating those decisions in this line as well as the mask and everything else that ninja's doing which is which is just horrendous as soon as you see those those first two cards line up you're just you're just like all oh, right here it comes so you're playing mind games already yep um and yeah so yeah you have to nice remember one. that katsu can also tutor for stuff too when he hits with oh god because yeah, oh, so yeah this isn't even <laughs> like this can be tutored and also it can be a card that you discard to tutor something like yeah. it is just it fits in for <laughs> everything that katsu already wants to do you can mm. you can discard this card to tutor for something from katsu and then you can use bonds of ancestry to banish it and then go get another one like yeah. uh, if yeah, you're is, if you're surging or descendant hits you can discard the dishonor to get the bonds of ancestry play the bonds of ancestry for free because of its effect yep banish the dishonor get the next dishonor yeah and that's like you, just, oh, you just get it like it's, it's it's an on play or an on attack or whatever it's not an on hit trigger yeah. so it's like you just go get it um <laughs> yeah yeah it's and, i i just really like every the, I've, i keep saying this about the cards that i've picked but everything about this card is just something that katsu likes um yeah. this is just yeah. a well-designed card that ticks a bunch of boxes uh and it's just really sick so yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like <laughs> like bill good. said it, at worst, it is a zero three pitch three block, which is like really good anyway. Like All turn you one, need to start your turn. Draw yeah. this turn one. Who cares? Pitch it. Attack with their Kadachis, right? Like yep. exactly. And then it's still in your deck to tutor later. It's exactly. crazy. It's a good one. Um, nice. Yeah, but uh, let's kick it back over to Az for his number four for number four. Number four, four, four. four. <laughs> Burger King uh, foot lettuce. Uh, <laughs> foot lettuce. <laughs> I probably should have heard of the meme Burger King foot lettuce. I'm <laughs> oh, not going to well. go into that, but uh, people comment down below oh, uh, no. if you know about number 15 Burger King foot lettuce. Oh, okay. No. Okay. Yeah. Just comment, just comment down below about the foot lettuce. I'll but be the foot I'll, lettuce. I'll be keen. I'll be keen to read them. I'll probably forget about it and then be like, why the hell is everyone talking about this foot lettuce crap? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> uh, but um, but yeah, I probably should have shoehorned this pick in earlier because we were speaking about the codexes. Mm. Um, so uh, one of my favorites is Codex of Frailty. Ooh. So um, yeah, so this is a uh, Assassin Ranger action, blocks for two, pitches for yellow, and costs nothing to play. So exactly the same as the others in that regard. Uh, and this says uh, each hero puts an attack action card from their graveyard face down into their arsenal, then each hero that does discards a card. So nice bit, little bit of recursion on there, and then you get a ponder token under your control and a frailty token under their control. Um, so what I like, what, what I like about this is the is the sheer recursion factor. You know, obviously you, with with rangers, sometimes you're blocking with arrows and your favorite arrows go to the bin, or you fired them multiple times because you're trying to fire the same thing over and over again. With this, it allows you to, for nothing, just put that card into your arsenal uh, face down. So then, if you've got even if even even if you haven't got a, a whole hand to play with, if you've got a tuning trigger available to you, you can then fire that card that you just put there. Um, so I think it's really really cool. Love it. Just allows you to fire more of your favorite arrows, and um, and yeah, you get a ponder token as well, so you can refresh back up to that five cards, which is absolutely sick in Rangers. Just filling your arsenal at the end of your turn is always good, especially if you've got like cross wrap and stuff where you can get more opts from the stuff you've already put there. Um, so yeah, ponder slam dunk in it. And then just a bit of recursion for the other stuff as well. Yeah, I I, um, I forgot that you put this on your list because I, I I I mentioned it a little bit on talking about my the Codex of Blood Rot, but I also really yeah. like the Codex <laughs> of Frailty. Um, I think this is the favorite I would say of the three, like just in terms mm -hmm. of like the commun the community. 
Um, yeah. Because, like I said, it has the the recursion, and this is like you know, your six red in the ledger. It's like like red in the ledger four, five, and six, right? Um, mm-hmm. with yeah, Azalea. exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. So, so that's what I mean. Codex, Codex can essentially read as any arrow in your graveyard when you draw it. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it's just, it's crazy. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, you obviously you do have to discard a card if you do the thing, but you know, it doesn't really matter because you're still, you're still, even if, even if you've got a, a full card hand, you can play this discard a card. You still got two cards to play with in your hand there, which will probably buff up the thing that you're getting if you've got a tunic available or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. Love it. It also forces your opponent to, to discard a card if they meet the requirements. It has to be an attack mm. action card. It cannot be a regular action card. Um, yeah. But they have to do it. Like, it's not like a may. Like, so they, they have to do it and they have to discard the card. Um, yeah. Exactly. And I'm, um, I really like this in Uzuri, putting back Isolates. Uh, in it, because Isolate, in my opinion, oh, yeah. is the best stealth card for Uzuri and it's not even close. And I just mm. want more Isolates. I want like a critical mass because every single turn I want to isolate. And then sneak in uh, a, a mini dominated uh, on hit effect like a uh, like a shakedown or a surgical yeah. extraction. And Codex of Frailty just gets me back my isolates, and mm-hmm. I like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I that's what I'm running it for. <laughs> um, I think it's yeah. uh, something that I just realized is I think obviously it makes sense that it's an attack action card that you get. Um, but just the fact that as pointed that out, that it is like an, a, an attack action. Mm. Um, if it was just an action card, you could just loop two of these, uh, Good, yeah. forever. <laughs> just so draw the rest of your Cause they don't, they don't it. vanish. Yeah. They don't vanish each yeah. other. Yeah. So, funny. uh, it probably was not ever part of the design because I feel like the, the point of this is to get attack actions back. But, um, <laughs> If that wasn't something that they considered, then good job. Now you have 50 frailty tokens. Eat it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, your next Kadachi is attacking for negative 49. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. They, they, the, the, um, the tokens do stack, by the way, just in case you're curious. Yeah. They, if they do. You're, yeah. If you're somehow <laughs> able to give your opponent multiple, they, they do stack. Um, yeah, it would have been just very amusing. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. L, what's your number four? Ooh, number four. Let's see, what do I have last? Okay, I'll save that one for last. So my number four is going to be another split card, but this time we're splitting with Bill's Picks, where you have an assassin ninja card with flick knives. Um, mm-hmm. First of all, I love the art in this card. Uh, it looks like a dude from Assassin's Creed, just straight up, just going to say that. Yeah. It looks like an Assassin's Creed dude and like a dude from Mortal Kombat. Like, this is like... Noob, Ezio Noob Cybot. Um, <laughs> so for, your, for the video gamers out there. Um, so Flick Knives is an Assassin Ninja Equipment arm piece. It is a legendary card. Um, it blocks for one and has Blade Break, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's not nothing, actually. And it says, once per turn, attack reaction. So this is an offensive um, piece of equipment. And it says, uh, for zero... Target dagger you control that isn't on the active chain link deals one damage to target hero. If damage is dealt this way, the dagger has hit, and so then it triggers its on-hit effects. If the dagger has an on-hit effect, uh, destroy the dagger. And I was thinking, like, okay, I like this effect. I think it's super flavorful. You're literally throwing your dagger at someone uh, to deal damage. The damage itself is very hard to prevent outside of, like, prevent damage effects right Mm -hmm. um you can't block this with like a a reaction card or like a defense reaction or you can't block this with a normal block card it's it's a really difficult thing to deal with so it's almost like quote free damage right and you have two daggers so it's it's a virtual like two bonus damage unless you're doing shenanigans and i think you should probably be doing the shenanigans because the shenanigans are like Easy. They're like easy includes. Um, and I don't have it pulled up, but the shenanigans, it's an attack reaction that's also Assassin Ninja. It's a blue card, cost zero, blocks three, and you give plus one to an Assassin or Ninja attack. And then uh, if that hits, you get to equip a dagger from your graveyard. So that's the way to get your daggers back. From, um, your, inven- from your inventory. From your inventory. But did I say graveyard? Inventory. Yeah. Um, which is basically your sideboard, <laughs> uh, if you don't know. Um, yeah, you have an inventory both both in CC and in Blitz, so you can actually have multiple daggers in your 
in your inventory. Um, and so, like, I think this is just, like, actually really good. I think it's really cool. I love the flavor of throwing daggers. But I think this card's kind of a monster. Like, it... it think about it this way. It's like, monster. Goliath Gauntlet gives, like, a plus two um, to, like, a, you know, co attack that costs uh, two or greater. Uh, that's a one-time effect. Plus two, you don't get a block. This one also deals you two damage or more if you have more and it also blocks one so like mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. like i don't want to say it's a power crep goliath gauntlet because they're doing different things but it's operating in that same design space virtual two damage on a on an arm piece of equipment but this one also blocks and this one also has the upside of getting those on hit effect triggers um just straight up dealing the damage making it really hard to to deal with and then also you have the recursion effects if you're running the other dagger recursion a reaction, which I think, once again, is just really good because it's a zero cost blue, goes good in ninja, also blocks three. And so, like, I was like, I don't need to run any of the other dagger cards. Like, I don't need to run Hurl. I don't need to run any of that other stuff. I could just run Flick Knives and the reaction. And it's like, I think it's just really good. And I was looking at my Uzuri list and my Arachne list, and I'm just like, I could just cut my blue cut to the chase, which is like a zero plus one reaction that, you know, lets me look at the top of my opponent's deck and only affects uh, contract cards. Um, mm -hmm. And this, and then the, the, the other reaction, blue, blocks three, zero cost, plus one, but also gets a dagger back. And I'm like, it's just better. It's like just straight up better. Yeah, so I like Flick Knives. I actually think it's like legitimately good. And if you get one of these in draft or sealed, you, this is like a killer. This will like, this is a monster in, in, in limited. And I think it's also very good in... Um, CC and Blitz. Better in Blitz because let lower health total. So that's my spiel yeah. on well, flick knives. Yeah. yeah, this quality. Yeah, yeah. you could have a, you could you could have a stacked inventory as well, couldn't you? Because you could keep getting the uh, you could keep, you could keep throwing your you can simulate more than two damage, right? If you run all of the daggers in your inventory, yeah, you well, could you could um, yeah you can do a maximum right now of five five, you um, can do five now. Yeah. I guess unless you no, because it is a reaction, so you can't get it back with give and take. Um, but yeah, that's actually one of the things. Oh. the okay. one of the things I'm I'm not happy about with flick knives is that there's only one card that allows you to re-equip a dagger that they've printed thus far. I assume they're going to be doing more at some point, but I would I would love to make flick knives like the the purpose of the deck. Uh, oh, have, like, I see. Juggler type thing. Right, yeah. So concealed blade is a majestic. So it only comes in three versions. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, oh, it's okay. just the red. Yeah. Um, okay, wait. Okay, wait. Let me let me think. Let me think. What are the other ways to get it back? So you could remembrance. Does remembrance get back reactions, or is it only action? Oh no, cards? it is just action cards. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there's also um. Memorial Ground? Does Memorial Ground get better, or is it only action cards with that one as well? I think Memorial Ground is also just actions. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think I, I don't know if there's a way to recycle reactions quite yet. So, um, so I think no. five is probably the upper limit. But once again, like my my point is that uh, like it's like an easy include, right? Assassin mm -hmm. didn't really have good arm equipment right now anyway. Um, it's virtual free damage, and uh, you also um, can just put in the uh concealed blade and it's just a really really good include that is an easy swap at least for like arachne you can just take out your blue um cut to the chases and put it in because it's like almost the same um, yeah yeah so yeah yeah no i i'm a big fan of flick knives and i think you're totally right in limited this is a beast um <clears throat> specifically in ninja you're really good at getting people down to kadachi range which is like you know one or two life this makes Kadachi range twice as big. This makes Kadachi range for life. Um, it does, yeah. Like, because yep. if your opponent, if you attack with both Kadachis and they take them and they're at two, like you're, they're they're basically dead. Yeah. Um, yep. And yeah, so I think that Flick Knives is fantastic. I the, my one gripe, like I said, is just that I wish there were more ways, like that you could just instead of having a sideboard, just have fifteen knives. <laughs> yeah, I I will yeah. note. I think that is a great design space for future supplemental sets. I will it's say. Be. Oh, and also uh, one thing to note for constructed, class constructed, you can only have three of any card in your deck. So you can actually have three mm -hmm. daggers of each dagger in your deck if you would like. Um, 
between like your equip what you have equipped and then what's in your like uh, your your inventory. For blitz, it's only two, but for limited for tokens, you have unlimited tokens. Um, that is something probably will never come up, but if you somehow have what you know draft four concealed blades and hey with the weird pull rates for outsiders maybe you get four mm-hmm. concealed blades and mm. a flick knives it could happen i don't know um you could actually do that because you technically have infinite tokens uh in in limited so yeah, that that's yeah. an official thing it was actually talked about in in some of the judge notes where you have unlimited like spider's bite for example um yeah yeah so nice. that's hilarious yeah um yeah. Anyway, uh, as fourth or fifth, last or mine? I don't know. I think it's yours after Kel, isn't it? I think it's mine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah, it's yours. Yeah. <laughs> My number four. Um, oh yeah, you're number four. Let's yeah. talk about uh, head leads the tail. Mm. Um, this is another uh, very similar to give and take in that it's just a one cost uh, red that attacks for three. This one only blocks for two. Uh, I'm just pulling it up so that I can make sure I'm not uh, old, old, remembering the effect. Old man running. Old man. <laughs> I remember, I think it was Kel mentioned that... He's like uh, Naruto running too. He's got his hands back. Yeah. Back. He's like Naruto running. And then people were calling this uh, this card the party bus because um, the effect of the card is when this attacks, you get to name another card. Attack action cards with that name have plus one attack this combat chain. And then this has go again. So... The immediate, the the before I even thought of anything else, uh, the utility for this for me is uh, Crouching Tiger decks. Um, for you know, with Benji uh, specifically, I really want to make a Tiger Benji deck that Gross. that is more consistent to play. Um, <laughs> and this is just a third now um, buff that works wide with these. Um, yeah. We have uh, Art of War. Uh, we have <laughs> Crouching or not Crouching Tiger, Roar of the Tiger, or people call it Art of Roar. Because it yeah. buffs your crouching tigers by one. If you and call then, it Art of War, you can't go, it's the roar of the tiger, it's the thrill of the... <laughs> Just saying. You're, you're absolutely correct that that is not <laughs> something that I can do. Um, but uh, but yeah, so now we have not only those two, but Head Leads the Tail. Just for extra redundancy, um, you just attack with it and name Crouching Tiger, and then all of your Crouching Tigers have plus one. Going this into uh, Roar of the Tiger makes them just attack for two and costs one resource, um, which is just really good. Um, and it also works with, you know, just other ninja shenanigans. It works the best, in my opinion, with Crouching Tiger. But, um, you know, it does still also work with if you have a chain where you you feel like you can do two or 300 wins, then this is an attack essentially for five or six, depending on yeah. how many um, attacks you follow it up with. Um, and for one, that's a great rate. Um, obviously, with uh, this into uh, a Crouching Tiger deck, you know you could even name uh, the Tiger Swipe if you wanted to, to make that mm. a little bit harder to block to make sure that it hits so that you can create more. Um, something that I believe, as mentioned, because this is a, a, something that you just really enjoy uh, thinking about, but Head Leads the Tail doesn't even have to be for a wide turn. It can also just push something up to the next breakpoint that yeah. makes it mm. super annoying to block. So you can go Head Leads the Tail, name Command and Conquer, attack with Command and Conquer for seven. Like, yeah. it's it's just really flexible. Um, it's really interesting, and it works perfectly in the type of Benji deck that I want to make. So it had to go on my list. Uh, I think that it's sweet. And I'm glad that I already have two of them because that's the that's all of them that I need. I think. <laughs> nice, nice. I wonder if yeah. uh, I wonder if Fi is gonna play this and be like uh, uh, Phoenix Flame or whatever. I could do, things. yeah. I could see that, yeah. Um, but yeah, just giving things of your choice plus one attack this combat chain. That's great. That that's really really good, flexible, and uh, I'm hoping to be able to attack in with some three attack crouching tigers sometime soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I really like this card uh, because it is really, really good in constructed formats and in limited is just like the middest card of all time. Oh, like yeah. it, in limited is literally just like a pick the name of the other card that you have in your hand. Like that's what yeah, it exactly. is. Like four. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, then, yeah. Then attack for like five instead of four or whatever. But like in yeah. constructed, it could be like a house. Like this could be a, a card that wins you the game. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's cool. 
it's just one of those things again that the set is doing to smooth over the ninjas, isn't it? Just naming the cards and just making everything run mm -hmm. a little bit more, a little bit more smoother for them. So, yeah, it's almost like LSS is saying, "Okay, we trust you. Here, make your own combos." <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I I think I'll have to go double check, but I, I when I saw this card and I, I retweeted it, and I was just like, I, I mentioned immediately, like, "Oh, this looks great for like Tiger Katsu," and I think James White like liked that tweet. And I'm like, well, James thinks the same thing. Like, he thinks it's good for Tiger. James approves. For Tiger Katsu. And it's like, yeah, because yeah, it is. Because it is just gross. Like, this is yeah. like a one for three that gives you like a plus five if you're like, if you're like really smashing in or something. Like, yeah, mm. if you're just going off. Yeah. Um, yeah, but anyway, that's uh, I really like that card. Honorable mention as well to uh, just in this slot specifically to Wander with Purpose, mm -hmm. which is the new Benji spec. I feel like if I'm talking about a Benji deck, I have to mention it. But um, Wander with yeah. Purpose basically just gives you an extra, gives you one time or two time, I suppose, access to Katsu's uh, hero ability if you're Benji, um, which uh, just allows you to search for something with combo, which is great because it allows you to search for Tiger Swipe. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, again, I just feel like I would it would I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Benji specialization while singing Benji's praises in this top five. I <laughs> do love the flavor of the Benji specialization having the effect of his mentor Katsu. I think that's super cool. Yeah, Katsu, the wanderer. Yeah, <laughs> wander with purpose. Yeah, um, it's yeah, got a, anyway. it's got like a Shiba Inu in the art too. I don't have it pulled up because I didn't have it prepped, but. Uh, Wonder with purpose also. Oh, yeah, he's such a little good boy. He's got a little, little cute doggo in there. Oh, I'm like, doggo. Yes. I'm like, yo, cute dogs are in Wraith. Let's go. Yeah. 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 Willing Brilliant. to buy a uh, cute dog hero. Yeah. <laughs> Any hero that's got like a little cute animal companion, like a dog, I'm like, hell yeah, let's go. Hell exactly. yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, as your final one to start wrapping us up here. Cool. Yeah. So uh, my last one is a uh, just a common cycle, actually, um, but one that I think is impactful in uh, Azalea for digging deep, and that's Spire sniping. Yeah. Um, so uh, common cycle comes in red, yellow, and blue. Um, so uh, cost one to play, blocks for three, and attacks for five, four, or three, depending on the pitch value. Uh, but it just says when it's put uh, when it's put or turned face up in Arsenal. Look at the top two cards of your deck, then put them back in any order. So it's like a, another, again, another pseudo opt effect. You can't put the cards that you reveal to the bottom. Uh, but um, I, I think this is nice because obviously, if you have it in your arsenal already, you can use your cross wrap to first of all opt to have a look at the top card. If you want to leave that there, then great. You can use the, you can swap out the spire sniping for the dominated card on top. If you don't want it there, you can put it to the bottom and then you trigger Spire Sniping's effect because obviously it's turned face up. You look at the top two and potentially Spire Sniping turns into another arrow which is better than what you've got, essentially. So it can smooth out those, um, the, 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 you know, and sort of become the arrow that you want to find, essentially. Yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah. And if not, if all goes, if all goes tits up, then you can just play, you can just play Spire Sniping as a normal arrow attack for yeah. five or yeah. three um so uh so yeah it's pretty good and um i uh i like the red and the blue versions because obviously blue is obviously great for pitch blocks for three uh can still get the pseudo opt effect and obviously the red is good for if you just need to fire it if you need to fire it sort of situation um so yeah, yeah thought was thought was a pretty pretty good pretty good azalea card so i had to go in there i i think it's really good too i've been playtesting a lot of the uh blitz starter decks for the review oh, yeah. that the review that i did I played basically mm. every deck against every other deck a couple times, and Spire Sniping is, like, super good. It's, like, really good for Azalea. Yeah. Um, and, and those decks are only running, like, the barbed castaway bow. Like, I can imagine, like, yeah. with, with an actual, like, good loadout with, like, uh, like Death Dealer and, like, mm. uh, Cross Wrap and all that kind of stuff. Like, this seems like it's just gas. Like, it's, it's really yeah. good for setting up. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If, 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 if you put this into your arsenal with Death Dealer, you're essentially going three cards deep because you draw the card, then you look at the top two yep. and look mm -hmm. and, and and look at you know go further. Um, and still, you forget as well that obviously you still have Azalea's ability. So if you want to go one card deep again blindly, you can still do that as well. Uh, worst absolute worst case scenario. Um, so it's just giving, yeah, just giving Azalea more tools to to find the thing that she needs to find, uh, and I believe that she is finding it as well. There's a lot of players playing her at the moment. The um, 
the Realm Games Brawl event, which is happening right now as we're recording this, is has is seeing fourteen players representing Azalea, and that's the uh, the second most represented hero mm. of the event. We are um, we're entering Ranger Winter. Everyone fear right. the on hit effects because I fear saw the on hit. I just saw Riptide kill a kill a Icelander. So let's go, right. let's go. Yeah. Yeah, people. I feel like very soon we're going to get people that are calling for uh, red in the ledger bands. Oh yeah, Pe- people are going to be so tired of playing. Oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta yeah. find my old tweets. I, I tweeted a multiple times how like the second Azalea becomes good, her effects are so like game breaking, yeah. and like soul destroying. People are going to complain immediately, and it's going to mm-hmm. happen. Like it's going to happen. People are going to be like, "Wait, yeah. this is actually like busted. I can only do one thing." Like it's like. Yeah, yeah, get wrecked. And if, I think, if you hit me at all, <laughs> yeah, has dominate what? Yeah, yeah. I at least for um, Bravo, it's crush. Like you have to deal four damage. That is behind a gated effect, isn't it? Right, exactly. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to look back on this because uh, the, obviously the event is happening right now, and um, Azalea is obviously one of the heroes that has got the support in in Outsiders, but. Um, this could be, you know, because it's so fresh, because it's so fresh out there. This is the first event that's being played with Outsiders cards. So I reckon Azalea could have a chance of just swooping in and, 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 and winning it because of the fact that nobody knows or, you know, nobody nobody's prepared for it, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, but after after this event, it's going to be interesting to see what, what the top players then sort of deduct as the as a thing to do because you're going to have to put, put in red, red unmovable. Yeah, red unmovable. And, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Because uh, then, because you want to stop these massive on tall dominated things, and how you how do you do that? You put something in your arsenal that can block for eight. bloody nine or whatever yeah, yeah. it is eight. Uh, you know what it's you know what it's going to be. People are going to uh, start playing around the uh, the general sort of play pattern of I know that this is going to be dominated, so I'm going to have one red unmovable in my hand and one in my arsenal and two blue cards. <laughs> exactly. Or you're going to yeah. see more um, Oasis respite that kind of stuff too. Yeah. More damage prevention, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, um, and which but but I think is fine. But the thing is, though, if that's is that if that's what's happening, then the little tiny go wide decks are going to do better because like red mm. unmovable sucks against like a scar for a scar. Like who cares? You know, you block my scar for a scar. I'm just going to attack you with another one. Um, yeah. yeah. So, you so that's two where cards and three resources to block my four attack with go again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was so. like. A, I also like to point out the art. Uh, the archer in the art is using a death dealer. Like I'm pretty sure that's a freaking death dealer. And it's oh, not. Yes. It's not it Azalea is. shooting it. It's like a. It's like a dude. Um, yeah. So, it could be yeah, me. Definitely... Got, I've even got the hood. Looking at that. No. Yeah. That's Kel right. now. Yeah. That that that's that's Kel on the spy sniping um art actually. Yeah. I'm. I'm, um, I'm, yeah. I'm sniping. Uh, <laughs> I'm sniping a Starvo player down there. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Finally. Well, we had we had Steven in Everfest on um <laughs> what was that? Oh, it was uh, GM Armada card. No, it was No. Not it's not Pry. It's, I think it is Pry. It, pry? it is Pry. Yeah, cuz it's yeah. got the little yeah. hand, hand coming down. Yeah, it's the hand and then like the top of his head is like a it looks like a like a park, like a public park. <laughs> so, right, yeah. A little park, a little bench right Still, there, some pigeons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got, got a guy feeding the pigeons <laughs> like Old old yeah. bread from a bag, old old wonder yeah. bread. <laughs> um, but yeah, spire sniping. Just, I think. Oh, sorry, go ahead, As. I was gonna say yeah. I was just, just, <laughs> just I was just tagging onto your stupid scenario. <laughs> <laughs> we we just cannot like <laughs> we cannot cut these too short because that is the life and the the lifeblood of the flesh and blood <laughs> podcast, the premier flesh and blood yeah. podcast. Absolutely. The but it was just like that, um, that Home Alone like character with all the pigeons like on her shoulder and stuff, and they're just like sat on her head, and it's just like <laughs> there's one of one of those characters on Pry. It's, like, <laughs> it's literally that. It's literally that old lady. <laughs> yeah. Oh my it. god. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, I think Spire Sniping. You're absolutely correct. This is such a great card for Azalea. Um, yeah. You were even mentioning when you were uh, looking at. Uh, What's out of the one? Scout the periphery. Looking at one card on top of your deck is great. Looking at two and having the option of which one you're putting on top is even better. Um, yeah, and the fact that yeah, it's, exactly. like you said, the baseline is it's the red is a one for five. That's just an arrow. That's just an arrow that anybody would play. So, exactly. Um, yeah, I think it's yeah. I think it's a I, really good pick, really solid. And I, mm. I think I think one quick thing to just say about this before we move on is that 
This card was clearly designed for Azalea. And so I think this is one of those situations where a lot of people were concerned that other older heroes would be like left by the wayside. Like when I remember when Lexi got spoiled, everyone's like, what's going to happen to Azalea? No one's going to want to play Azalea because Lexi has all this other crap going on. And I think this speaks to them really wanting to breathe life into the old characters. We already knew that Azalea was going to be a, um, a, a focus here. I mean, James White, you know, famously told Az that uh, Azalea is going to be the business. But to see it, like, actually here and realized, and even just in common cards, too, mm-hmm. I think is really important. And it, it shows LSS's willingness to, you know, revitalize fan-favorite characters and characters that, um, you know, need, need the love and support. Or maybe maybe have a lot of love, but they need the support. So exactly, yeah. I yeah. think I think Spire sniping is a good indication of where things could go for other heroes. You know, shout out to the the Leviah and Bolton players, for example. I heavily yeah. expect to see some great stuff like this um, in Destal Dawn for for those players. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm excited for this. I, I bought a Spirit of Irina, Cold Foil Spirit of mm-hmm. Irina, off of one of our locals for I believe like twenty bucks. Oh, that's pretty uh, good, I'm man. Really excited for Bolton to become like top tier. <laughs> I, so Bolton is another one that's kind of like, not not as bad as Azalea, but I think if, when Bolton gets good, people are going to get salty because Bolton yep. has these turns. Everyone, call, everyone says Lumina, Boomina or whatever, where it's just yeah. like, no, I do nothing. I do nothing. I do nothing. Now you're dead. Now you're just dead. Here's like 50 damage. Like, yeah, yeah. And it's it's like, here's 50 damage. And also if you block, it becomes more. <laughs> yeah, and I'm gaining yeah. life for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, um, yeah, I think that this is exactly that. I think like spire sniping is them showing love to Azalea and proof that they can show love to specific classes yeah. uh, and heroes even um, yep. to, to make yeah. sure that they're able to keep up uh, in the face of technically like people would love to say that Lexi is a power creep to Azalea. I think they're totally separate heroes. Yeah. Um, yep. I mean, Uncle Joe. Le- I Lexi can't it. use knock the death whistle or red in the ledger. This card spire sniping is not great in Lexi or Riptide, it's like fine. You know, it's not the worst, but it, it's not yeah, what it is in Azalea. Really, yeah, it just doesn't really do anything in Riptide. But in Azalea, like like we've mentioned, um, just getting your your choice of anything that prevents you from having to blind activate Azalea is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, hey, the fact yeah. that this is just a totally fine arrow too hey, helps. <laughs> any of us OG uh, Azalea players know, knows how the blind activation goes. You're like, hmm, bunch okay. of buffs. Um, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll do some stuff. Uh, I guess I'll just blind Azalea to see if I get an arrow. <laughs> like, oh, that's just the thing. So bad. Like, yeah. cool. So bad. You're like, you got like a bunch of buffs in your hand. You're like, oh, right. Okay. Here we go. Right. I'm going to play a take aim. Yep. I'm going to reload this rain razors into my arsenal. I'm then going to use the cross trap to flip up the rain razors and have a look at the top card. Uh, it's a read the glide path. Okay. Bo- <laughs> bottom bottom, bottom that. Uh, blind Azalea, pray, pray that I get something. Yeah. Blind Praise Azalea, be. symbolism. Yeah, it's like ah. it's like I swear to God, I put arrows in this deck. Where are they? Yeah. Good yeah. stuff. Uh, um, yeah. Anyways, anyway, so move on. Onto uh, onto Kel's last pick. Mm, what yes. did you save for last? I assume the best. Well, yeah. I mean, this is kind of okay. My last pick is Shakedown. I love Shakedown. I love mm-hmm. Azalea, and uh, Azalea. I do love Azalea, actually, but I also you love do, Uzuri. Yeah. And um, this is Uzuri's specialization shakedown. So I want to mention this and also Uzuri. I wanted to put her on here, but I, I feel that putting a hero on is like, that's a little bit of a, it's a too, too, too much of a, like a freebie, I guess. Um, mm. So I want to talk about an actual card that goes in decks. So shakedown is the Uzuri specialization. It is a two uh, cost red pitch card that attacks for six and blocks for three. And it says, if you've played or activated an attack reaction this chain link, Shakedown has, when this hits a hero, choose red, yellow, or blue. They reveal their hand, banish a card of the chosen color. So, uh, this basically rips a card out of their hand. Uh, Most of the time, you're going to choose either red or blue, depending on who you're playing against, and depending on what you kind of want to do. Sometimes you might already know what's in their hand if you're being really cheeky and playing with some spice, like uh, pick a card, any card. Because you can pick a card, any card, look at their hand, and then shake down them. Um, shake, shake them mm-hmm. down. Uh, obviously, this works very well with Uzuri's hero ability because it itself is a reaction, and so it's it's active. But uh, you can also just play this naked and then just pummel them, and so then it is coming in for ten. And then also they have to discard a card from pummel, and then also they have to discard a card from shakedown. So like <laughs> shakedown plus pummel rips half their hand. Um, 
It's I, oh, I love it. I love it so much. This card's awesome. Um, you see, oh, it's, it's, it's easier to do as well on a four card hand as well because you play the stealth card, you switch it in for free, and then you play the pummel, which costs the other card in hand. So you could essentially do it off of four cards. Yeah, and that's can... what I saw. That's what I saw earlier on the stream as well. Is that Azuri can still operate with two cards because you stealth something and yep. then you switch in the big thing. So yep, yeah, and, it, just... and that is a good point. And another good point is that it doesn't matter what color they are either. So, like for example, a lot no. of a lot of other classes can do that with Command and Conquer. You can Command and Conquer plus a yellow or blue. With Uzuri, it can be. It just has to be any stealth card. It could be a red stealth card. Doesn't matter. It can be. Yeah. You can you can play Command and Conquer with two reds, two red two red cards. Um, yeah, exactly. And the, the the best part is like people they don't know what you're coming in with, and so like they can be like, oh crap, do they have a shakedown? I'm gonna heavily block, and so they heavily block, and they're just like, cool, um, no reaction, arsenal my card, pass, and then they just lost a bunch of cards from their hand, and now you're up mm -hmm. on value. Or if you're um, evil like me and they block with a bunch of cards and you're like haha spreading plague here's a here's a bunch of blood yeah. rat here's a <laughs> bunch of blood rat pox eat it um yeah so yeah i i very much love shakedown uh uzuri is my favorite hero i think um probably one of my favorite cards uh well not probably definitely one of my favorite cards it's very close now between uzuri lexi i also still really like azalea and arachne so those are like mm -hmm. probably my my top heroes but very, very yeah. much love Uzuri. Very, very much love her specialization. And um, I would just want to, I just want to rip cards out of your hand. And it's better when I get to see it and pick the one. <laughs> so, mm. yeah. So, yeah, that's all I want to do. All I want to do is shake down, pummel you. That's all I want to do. I'll make that into a song. <laughs> make that into a song. <laughs> all I want to do is shake down and pummel you. Hell Sounds yeah. like a, like a, uh, like something dirty. Yeah. You know what yeah. It's <laughs> It can be like one of those um, falling in reverse remixes where it sounds really nice oh, at the yeah. beginning and at the end it's just like, Pop yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not a vampire yeah. remastered or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, no it I was, was, the, was uh... Uh, the drug in me is you rem uh, That's remix. That's it. Yeah. That's the one. Where yeah. at the end he's just yeah. Yeah. I was gonna go uh, totally in an opposite direction uh, and say it should be a. Um... A, like Taylor Swift uh, parody song. <laughs> I don't yeah. know about you, but I'm Shakedown Pummel. You, <laughs> oh, God. yeah. Oh wow, yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> I don't, I don't even know. I don't know Taylor Swift songs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know the one. If it was wasn't, um, if it wasn't uh, a, a parent just by looking at me, I don't know Taylor Swift songs. <laughs> <laughs> I do know Falling in Reverse uh, re yeah. re remaster songs, though. So that makes that makes a little bit more sense, but you know. <laughs> Shake down, um, I'm on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, labels, labels, hit me up. Yeah. Um, yes, no. <laughs> hey, we we have um, uh, we can get we can get you on with some indie labels. We got Ep Epitaph on here. We can we can get you up on there. No problem. Hell yeah. Anyway, anyway, yeah. So anyway, my pick, my final anyway. pick is Shakedown. Love the card. It, 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 I yeah. put in the list Shakedown slash uh, Uzuri because um, they're kind of like one and the same. It's her specialization, but. Um, yeah. This is this is what I want to do in Flesh and Blood right now, and in fact, so much so that Uzuri has single-handedly inspired me to actually build a CC deck that isn't just as I'm sorry, saying, what that is yeah that isn't just as <laughs> being like hey you want to come on my stream or play CC decks and I'm like oh crap let me go build one real quick like yeah this is me being like I actually really want to play this so that's basically most, what I've been doing yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Uh, and me and force you force you guys into playing some CC. <laughs> yeah. I, well, it's funny. I used to. It's this weird thing. I used to only play CC. Obviously, this Blitz didn't really exist back then. But even when Blitz mm. started, I, we only played a little bit. And then as the game has progressed, and as more like Blitz heroes came out, I'm like, I just kind of want to play Blitz. There's more options, and it's faster, and it doesn't, yeah. doesn't take me like an hour and a half, you know, to to play a game. But yeah. with Outsiders, I want to play some CC. I also want to play Blitz too. Yeah, um, but yeah, just the back and forth of CC is 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 just is just a lot very very enjoyable. It's... Unless unless of course you play five rounds of Briar, then it's basically just bloody Blitz anyway. <laughs> well, I was, gonna, I was gonna say you could just be greedy. Uh, uh, CC, you can just be greedier than you could be in Blitz because in Blitz you're exactly. like in Blitz you're like yeah. I can't really take this like you know fifteen damage turn. I have to block a bunch. 
But in CC, you're like, yeah, whatever. I'll just I'll just come back at you for twenty five. No big deal. Mm. Yeah. 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 Exactly. It's just who can who can punch the biggest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and mm. uh, yeah. What's your card, Bill? Really My final card is a doozy of a card. Kicking the is... kicking the biggest. Yeah, I just I just love everything that this card stands for. Uh, Cyclone Roundhouse. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, once again. <laughs> Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So once again, another ninja card, another majestic ninja attack action. Again, I just think that they hit with like so many of the ninja cards in this set. And it was tough for me to say specific ones, but I think all of the action, all of the attack actions uh, Mm. so far are my favorite. Uh, Cyclone Roundhouse is, uh, as I said, it's a majestic. So it only comes in one color, which is yellow. So it pitches for two. Uh, It costs two as well. Uh, blocks for three uh, attacks for five and it has combo if spinning wheel kick was the last attack this combat chain this has at the beginning of the reaction step banish a random defending card from each chain link Mm. so yeah uh as a comparable card and a card that we've talked about on the podcast previously um the card that immediately comes to mind that this is most sort of related to is uh route from warrior Um, which we mentioned, and I think maybe specifically I mentioned as one of the cards that I hate playing against the most, because it just ends up being, uh, like a two cost buff that is actually for six instead of just three and whatever, because it bounces a card back to your opponent's hand. This does a very similar effect. If you're able to get the combo off, um, it banishes a card from, you know, not only the, the current chain link, but also from other chain links, which has the side effect of, Cards aren't going to your opponent's graveyard. That can be relevant for some reasons. It can banish equipment. If it, if yeah. they've blocked with an equipment in a previous combat Nasty. chain, it can banish that. Crazy. Um, Imagine banishing like... Uh, yeah, it does work. Banish, ban- banishing like a uh, shield. Like that... Uh, yeah. the, what, Rampart. What do you want? Rampart of Ram's Head. Like, oh, they'll Rampart, they'll Rampart one thing, and they're like, huh, get, get out of here. Cyclone Roundhouse, yeah. baby! Cyclone Roundhouse, and you just kick their shield out of this plane of existence. Yeah, literally. Um, but uh, but yeah, so then obviously the, the most <laughs> immediately impactful part of this card is that it banishes one of the cards that they block with, with for, they block this card with. So it most of the time, this will sort of decrease their block value by three, kind of like buffing your attack by three in sort of a roundabout way, in sort of a roundhouse sort of way. Um, hey. But, uh, hey. but also, <laughs> it, similar to, uh, or not similar to Route, they don't get the card back into their hand. It's just gone forever. <laughs> so, Unless gone. they're Levia, and then they can Unless play it. They're Levia yeah. or their chain, uh, but you, you know, most of the times you won't be playing this against either of those heroes. Um, <laughs> it is also just a two cost attack for five. So yeah, you can. Uh, by the way, um, you can you can pummel this. Just just saying. Yeah, <laughs> you can pummel yeah, this. This card. can be pummeled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love Whatever. that. There, there are so many things where it's like, oh, this card is so expensive, but it has a relevant effect and it costs two or more, so it can be pummeled. Pummel it. <laughs> I'll love pummel one. ninja. <laughs> uh, pummel. Yeah, hey, hey, you can pummel surging strike too. You can, you can pummel. You can also pummel uh, dis, uh, descendant. Oh no, no. Um, uh, bonds, bonds of, An- of ancestry. Bonds of ancestry. Yeah, you can pummel that yeah. one too. Bonds of ancestry can be pummeled. Um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. just really, really sick. I, I love the fact that it can randomly banish equipment. I think that's fantastic. I think it's cool. Um, yeah. The fact that it just pushes through damage on its own if your opponent decides to block with it. They have to kind of block it with two cards. Otherwise, if they only block it with one card, it doesn't do anything. Yep. Um, like, it just... It, it proposes a very awkward situation for your opponent. Um, I think especially if you are also threatening a mask trigger on this it yeah. really makes them overblock um, to make yeah. sure that you like don't get the card or they just give you the card anyway and you're laughing because you have an extra card. Um, but yeah, just in general, I, I love Cyclone Roundhouse. I love the name, the art, the effect. Um, and uh, also, of course, honorable mention to Spinning Wheel Kick, which is the first combo starter that also combos into itself. I guess that's mm. not technically true. Um, we had 100 wins. 100 wins. It's kind of like 100 yeah. wins, sort of. We had 100 wins. Um, yeah. So another new uh, starter that sort of combos into itself. Um, 
which is very relevant and also randomly has a similar effect to 100 wins if you combo it into wins of eternity because spinning wheel kicks put themselves back into your deck yeah um which is yeah, which of. is pretty interesting um, um and very important question for both of you guys and the audience very important uh and this is all based off of what as said earlier the that's up for you again um <laughs> if this, if this is the spinning kick, when are we going to get sure you can? Are we going to over under on sure you can being in the mysterious set? This is the question sure to the audience. No. Will yes. sure you can be in the um, the mysterious set? The transcendent set. Yeah. yeah, I think it should be because it or, would just be it would just be the finalization of the of the, the punch head jab line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. just punch combo because it's like it's like head jab open the center. Like, Shoryuken. Shoryuken. <laughs> yeah. or we also have hadoukens as well so we'll see we'll see if we can mm -hmm. we, if we can get fit fit some hadoukens in there but hadouken doesn't really feel like a combo thing um there's going to be a hero that just literally just that that's their weapon is just hadouken like constantly just spamming it just standing there and spamming hadouken, hadouken. for the hadouken. entire game hadouken. <laughs> what there should there Shit, if there hadouken. isn't if there isn't a new sort of like uh something for benji that's just like um like crouching low kick or something that just oh, yeah. combos oh, into yeah. itself like <laughs> oh, <laughs> way so annoying <laughs> it's a card called like corner him with light punch it's just like punch combo yeah i think that these are absolute cards that should be made james Sweet. white i know yeah. you're listening sweep spam yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's like the um, the Kazuya kick in Tekken, yeah, where yeah. it's just like it, it hits them in hits them low, <laughs> mid, then down, and it, <laughs> yeah. you just yeah. it's impossible to block essentially. Yeah, yeah just yeah. Uh, Blanca slash E Honda palm heel strikes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as dude, long as you've got the stamina on the controller, to keep the. I know <laughs> for a fact, and obviously it's seen here in this card, Cyclone Roundhouse, that a lot of the folks over at LSS like these classic video games like Street Fighter. I would not be surprised at all if we have a crap load of Street Fighter references in the Mysterious set. Like, there's probably going to yeah. be, like, a ton of them. Like, yeah. already looking for it. But... Yeah. It's going to be absolutely um, the Street Fighter set. But, yeah, that that rounds out our, our list for uh, our top five. Are you, you um, trying to round it again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is, isn't he? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. It's um, really come full circle. But uh, full circle, roundhouse. No! It, everything is roundhouse. <laughs> this is just this is just how it works. Um, but yeah, anyway, I think that'll that'll uh, finalize our, our our lists for today, uh, as well as our discussion. Yeah. Uh, if we want to move into our arsenal step, does anybody have something interesting that they'd like to bring to the table for arsenal? Uh, I can not interesting, but since my outsiders cases aren't arriving until like probably the day that this video goes live, which is Wednesday, like after mm. um, Outsiders, I have just been playing a crap load of Diablo 4 with the Diablo 4 yeah. open beta weekend, and then I played a bunch the previous weekend, because I pre-ordered the game, because I'm, I'm a dirty little Diablo uh, junkie. And um, <laughs> oh, it's so good, I love it, man. It's such a great game. I played Rogue a bunch the first weekend, now I'm playing Necro. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. So that's all I have to say. It's just good, and I like it. And when it comes out, I'm going to lose a lot of time. Um, and yeah. we're playing PS5 and the couch co-op. Last weekend was kind of jank. This weekend works a lot better. And it's one nice. of the games that like Robin plays with me. We play a lot of Diablo 3 together. So we're going to be playing a lot of Diablo 4 together. So it's a very, hey, uh, other nerds out there, couples, if you want to play some nice couch co-op, kill monsters together, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. And it's like a good, like, bonding experience just killing the hordes and hordes of demons and also some yeah. humans this time because humans are also terrible so um, i think that's what i think that's what you need in it. you need something that you can just sort of like hack and slash style but then with some mm -hmm. form of like loot um as well and like reward for you know hacking through countless racking issues and what have yeah, you yeah exactly exactly that's what you're <laughs> yeah. um, there, there are classic. yeah there i mean there are like the carvers and the fallen yeah, and all that fallen. kind of stuff in this one yeah, but yeah. but Diablo I, uh, Four is way darker. It's it's going to like grim dark territory, and it's like yeah, yeah, it's 
it's, it's from from what i've seen so far i did the um the early access last weekend as well hell yeah um i played a uh sorcerer uh, hell yeah uh and got her to level 25 and then did the world boss event uh which was tons of fun bunch of legendaries um yeah. but yeah it is very much like grimdark there are a lot of um like you know enemies that are you know like the fallen like we've said like just sort of like little goblins and demons and whatever but mm -hmm. there's a whole part of the the main story as soon as you first start where you just have to kill a bunch of cultists that you were partying with the night before and like oh, yeah, right. that's just real like that's they're, just they're so like, they're like named they're like actual you're like killing yeah. like steve it's like hi i'm steve yeah. i'm a love the local uh cobbler and I'm like no you're a bastard die <laughs> like, die steve yeah, yeah. Yeah, you smack him in the face. No, I shot yeah. him in the neck with my arrow. It's like flesh and blood, proper like arrow into the eye socket kind of, kind of situation. Yeah. You know, nice. yeah, little headshot. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah, so I'm I'm really excited for that. I hope tomorrow or potentially later tonight I'll have some more time to try out. I really want to play Druid. Um, that's what I'm doing today. The, that's what I'm doing yeah, today. The, uh, the preview for druid was what really drew me in anyway like the the fact that you kind of switch between forms and all of the attacks have this like just insane weight behind them yeah um was the the thing that was just like yeah okay i'm playing diablo 4 <laughs> you should you should add me to your uh you should add me to your battle.net I, I typically just play by myself but say maybe someday we can play together <laughs> we can play together yeah. and Absolutely. what's, what's great about diablo 4 is that it is cross-platform so if you're playing on ps5 yes. You can play with people who are playing on PC. It doesn't matter. So as long as you're like on your friends list or whatever. Yeah, we awesome. should definitely do that then. Kill some demons. Yeah, it's fun. If you can if you can get into the queues. Uh, it wasn't actually that bad yesterday. I thought it would be a lot worse, but I only had to wait for like a half hour. And then I just played. Last like... weekend was atrocious. <laughs> Last weekend was really bad. But to be fair for them, uh, it is an actual beta test. It isn't just like a glorified demo. Um, they are literally stressing the servers, which is the whole point. They want to make it so that they did, they did a whole blog post on this. They're they're stressing the servers to see how much they can take so that the, when the game actually comes out, it won't be like this. So yeah, that's fair so enough. Fine. Yeah, it, enough. But, yeah. So Diablo Four, and also I haven't played it yet, but uh, Resident Evil Four also comes out this weekend. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I will probably buy that too while I wait for my Outsiders. Oh my god, dude! Oh my god! Everyone's like opening up their Outsiders. They're like, look at that! I pulled like. Five fables and thirty six legendaries from my case. That's what I'm about to do after this. Oh, let's go! Let's go. <laughs> and then let's I'm, go. and then Best I'm like, to you. this is where I'd put my outsiders if I had any. If I had it, <laughs> yeah. I have, uh, I have my pre-release. I have, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look at the the cold foil Uzuri that that LSS sent to me, and I'm just gonna be like, please come to me. I've started up my my master set. This is my box for for outsider stuff. Um, nice. And, uh, <laughs> Just yeah, rolling in Kel's face. Yeah, uh, all of the all of the blue cards are majestics. The extra <laughs> aren't the, we great co-hosts? The extra dunk <laughs> is that I could have bought a case locally from Discs and Dice, and that is one of the places that had the error box. I could have had the error case. Oh, like, imagine that! It could have been mine. No, it's oh, okay. imagine if you filmed it as well. You'd be like, "What the bloody hell!" <laughs> I, I actually think that would have been great for me personally and for my channel, but I don't think that would have been good for Flesh and Blood, to be honest. To have like yeah. one of the biggest channels televising it to like the most amount of people, like this horrible yeah. collation <laughs> error. Like, this is probably... what you can come to expect from the set: five yes. legendaries in one box. <laughs> yeah, because like. Uh... I don't think anyone is happy with it except for the person who owns that case. <laughs> like, I, I think I think yeah. they're the only person that's like jazzed about it. Everyone else is like, "Oh no!" Like, "Oh, oh no!" Does this mean what have we done? Yeah, what have we done? So anyway, um, yeah, yeah. So uh, once again, uh, thank you everyone for uh, tuning in and hanging out with us. This was a fantastic time, and I hope that you have uh, a ton of luck with your outsider stuff. Not the most amount of luck i think that the fewer of these god cases that exist probably can, the better but you can have like um, i don't know four legendaries and a cold yeah. foil legendary that's fine you don't need 36 of them you can have like yeah, five nobody needs nobody needs 12 trench of sunken treasures <laughs> yeah, like, know, right? no. that's just not a number <laughs> that see, is reasonable. you just see like the 20 rainbow foil <laughs> flick knives it's like 
Yeah. Mm, don't... They just like they stop meaning something yeah. for a while, you know? <laughs> Unless that's um... all part of the strategy, you know, that what one person's found the case of sunken doubloons and just found like twenty-nine <laughs> sunken treasure chests or whatever. Treasure chests. Like, I'll, I'll be honest, man, and this is probably something. This is a reason to root for me pulling these. If if I open up a god case and I have that, I'm just gonna give some away, like on the spot. I'm gonna yeah. be like, just com <laughs> yeah. comment on the video. I don't. Know, I'll pick some random people. I'll give. Well, I'll give you one of each of them. I don't care. Like, what am I gonna do with like twenty of them? It's gonna be so hard to exactly. sell that much too. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like yeah. so many. Oh, anyway. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if somebody? I haven't checked to see if this is the case, but if somebody went onto one of the discords and was like willing to sell fifteen x <laughs> trench of sunken treasure <laughs> willing to sell 25x flick knives yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay i'll pay you five dollars can you send me one it's like no yeah. i'm looking for more than that it's like dude you have all of the ones that exist right now be hey, cool <laughs> i'll i'll, I'll like i'll 4x that 20 bucks they give you 20 bucks and i'll i'll, I'll buy any of them for 20 bucks <laughs> yeah yeah um oh. yeah anyway wow. uh for all of you who uh have yet to open or that you have opened already i hope that your pulls were great and if yeah. you haven't opened yet i hope that your pulls are great uh best of luck to you as with your your opening thank you um but uh until next time i am bill from the spike feeders i was the host for today uh you can find me on twitter at bill tsf you can also find me on youtube at the spike feeders fab uh as i sort of mentioned at the beginning of the episode um i am actually just after this uh, going to be filming our Azalea Gauntlet, and nice. this is the Azalea deck that I will be playing. Um, so if that's something that interests interests you, uh, live edited gameplay content, uh, please nice. feel free to go check that out, um, especially because it will be with our glorious leader here. So Absolutely, um, yeah. Praise be. Yeah. Praise be. And uh, let's kick it over once again alphabetically to Az. Where can the people find you? Yeah, so uh, so I'm as from Go Again Gaming, Go Again Gaming on YouTube and um, on Twitter, uh, where I've posted some silly things recently, like a John Wick card <laughs> yeah. that I made. Um, so uh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter, Go Again Gaming AZ. Um, what was you going to say, Cal? This is a week of fours, isn't it? There's John Wick four, Diablo yeah. four, Resident mm -hmm. Evil four, all this weekend. So it many fours. A week, a week of fours, yeah. We're on all fours, baby. Outsiders anyway, four. Um... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Outside is full. Valve is just, Azalea. just sitting in a corner, shaking and vomiting. Azalea's yeah, revenge. I can't even count to three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what a ben glorious Benji. day that will be. Benji's like, I don't like this place. Why do we keep coming back here? Yeah, <laughs> everyone's gross. Everyone's take me like, home, to, oh, take me home to Mysteria, Daddy, please. He's just Benji. Just sounds like <laughs> I don't want to wander anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, geez, Katsu. He just sounds like he just sounds like Morty from Rick and Morty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, <Brilliant. laughs> anyway, yeah. over, over to you, Kel. Oh, yeah, hey, uh, I'm Kel. You can find me at uh, Red Zone Rug everywhere, YouTube, uh, Twitter. I'm mostly active on YouTube and Twitter. And uh, yeah, yep. Uh, I just released like my fifteen thousand subscriber special. Uh, long story short, I talk about how I'm mostly just going to be covering a lot more Flesh and Blood, and I'm cutting back on a lot of other games. So, if you want Flesh and Blood content, more Flesh and Blood content. <laughs> Come on, yeah. come on down. I'm going to be doing that even more than normal, so. Nice. Yeah. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Thank you, everyone, once again, for hanging out with us. Uh, thank you to my lovely co-hosts for joining me once again for a fantastic episode of the Living Legends podcast. Uh, everyone at home, stay well, stay safe. Uh, make sure to comment down below whether or not you would like to see Burger King foot lettuce uh, in your Burger King burger. That's right. And there's also one about like a sure you can or something. I don't know. Comment something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, your favorite, your favorite uh, Mortal Kombat character combo attack. That's a good one as well. Fatality. Noob Cybot. Ermac. Is it Ermac? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Is it Scorpion or Sub Zero? The same character? I was gonna say like um, uh, Katana, Melina, uh, Jade. <laughs> mm. Mm. But uh, but yeah. Until next time, stay well and stay safe, and we will catch you all in the next episode. Bye. Cheers.